Greetings and welcome to another faction guide, this time with the Lizardman. This is the second faction guide of the double event regarding the latest release DLC The Prophet and the Warlock. I already released the Skaven faction guide a few days before, I hope you liked it. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely catch up. We received really cool and new regiment of renown units. So every of the 15 races is now complete. Every race has his regiment of renown units. Really cool. We, are, we got also some really cool new units, very cool ones and new lords. So in summary, the DLC is very well done. So con congratulations CA. But in my opinion was every content release from CA in the Total War Warhammer universe till now really cool and beautiful and well done except for mortal empires but anyway let's start over here with the strength and the weaknesses of the lizard man after that we are take a detailed look on the complete army roster then i will show you some competitive builds and in the end we are going to do a summary so please enjoy the the show over here give me a thumb up give me a like give me a sub like always and let's start So let's talk about the strength and the weaknesses and let's begin with the advantages um, with the pro side and I have to say first that I really haven't found many outstanding points on both sides uh, on the on the pro side and on the con side but let's talk about the points I found definitely the biggest point or the biggest advantage is the massive dinosaur power we have a lot of dinosaurs a lot of monsters here on the roster the massive monster power here is really outstanding because we have a huge selection out of different monsters with different abilities the, these monsters are very heavily armored these monsters are very very strong causing a tremendous amount of ap damage and the most outstanding point over here is that you can mess them on on, on other factions you have monsters in the roster and you can choose one or two monsters to include in your build and then you haven't have, you, you don't have money left so that's it lizard man can uh, you can definitely absolutely build some um, to create some builds in which you are able to bring uh, several dinosaurs to the battlefield and this is the most outstanding point because your opponent has to concentrate on several large entities on the battlefield and this is a very very strong characteristic over here. The next point is a uh, yeah it's generally spoken you can say this is we have a very well balanced army roster so um, there is not besides from the from the monster side from the dinosaur side all other arms of service are quite okay they are not outstanding in quality but we have quite decent units in there in the cavalry and in the, in the infantry and in, in, in the missile infantry we have some good heroes lords and stuff so every arm of service is 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 quite well stocked definitely not as high as from skaven or the green skins but quite well stocked and in average are uh, have has the have the units are quite uh, a good skill level not a high tier character but also not low tier we have a, a quite decent or a, a mid-range amount of leadership in average and also the amount of armor besides the dinosaurs of course and for this reason every arm of service is okay it's definitely not the best in the game but it's also not worse and we have on, at least we have on each arm of service units so we have flying units we have dinosaurs we have monsters we have some parts of artillery we have heroes we have we have a lot of heroes we have a lot of lords uh, we have missile infantry all that stuff so every arm we have every arm of service available and quite decent units in there and a, also a quite good selection <laughs> the 
The next and last point is that we have some good healing capabilities. So, um, of course, meanwhile, Cold Blooded is not a healing ability anymore. So before the, the before the DLC, Cold Blooded was a healing ability. Meanwhile, it's our ability to remove Rampage. This is, in my opinion, also more efficient. But we have still the Bastilladon with the Verification Crystal or Master Mundi uh, with Apotheosis or stuff like that. So we have some good options over here to heal everything. And uh, for this reason, um, this is uh, definitely an advantage in my opinion and uh, worth to be mentioned, of course. You can say in addition, there are also some two smaller points, small advantages. You can say we have a very good access to magic. Different magical laws are available from the law of heaven, the law of beasts, um, the high elf magical lore. Uh, so quite interesting over here. The, I will say the, the Champions League of the magical laws is not available like the law of death or stuff like that. But besides from that, um, we have a good access to magic. Uh, this is this is what you can definitely say. Our other good point is in addition that m many units are aquatic, so they really perform very well in 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 water. It's not a big point, of course. How many times you play on maps uh, the, on terrain that is underwater or uh, in, in a swamp or stuff like that. But even though it is a it is a small it is a small advantage. But where is light, there is shadow, so let's talk about the cons. Definitely the most outstanding disadvantage, yeah, you guessed it, Rampage. Rampage is definitely the, m the biggest problem on the Lizardman roster. We have many units that are going on Rampage and uh, we have on the infantry primal instincts this is uh, in one point a uh, good ability because it, it will increase the charge bonus and the melee attack and uh, but also it causing rampage on the dinosaurs or also on um, the cavalry units we have a natural rampage over here um, this is very very bad um, so um, units get out of control you cannot control what is going on in the battlefield and in my opinion this is the worst mechanic ever <laughs> the most problem over here and um, I think this is the by far the biggest disadvantage on the Lizardman roster without Rampage I would say Lizardman would perform much 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 better so uh, Rampage is a huge disadvantage if you are not in control of your own units um, this is a problem this is really a problem and all of you know this so nothing more to talk about so let me explain on this point two things first of all what is rampage if your unit gets hurt or a lot of damage in a very short period of time it goes on rampage um, then um, yeah it is out of control you will, it will ignore all orders and will just attack the closest target of course just enemy targets not your own units or stuff like that but even though this is a problem because uh, in, in many cases units going to attack a foe that they will they are going to lose obviously or stuff like that and for this case is they doing some suicide attacks and uh, complete this complete garbage uh, nothing more to talk about if your unit is out of control and attack the closest target automatically then you can think about what will happen then um, a positive point is that we got meanwhile our ability called cold-blooded this ability was there before before the dlc the ability uh, was a healing ability you could heal with that ability your own units meanwhile it's a ability to remove rampage this is quite nice so um, and your unit will gain a leadership buff by 16 what is quite nice we have many units on the roster that are able to use this ability and it's not just for the own uh, for for itself you can use this ability on another unit and this is a very nice thing over here we also got a yeah, lack in ranged capabilities, I would say. Of course, we have this uh, laser dinosaur, um, but besides from that, nothing more. Well, we have the Bastilaton with the solar engine, but besides from that, 
not really ranged capabilities we have missile infantry which are more or less kite units you can say the the missile range is very very short so they are definitely not designed for the same use as normal archers to walk with your main army corps and stuff like that they are more or less kite units harass units if it comes really to ranged units with a shooting range artillery stuff like that there are there are no options you can say and for this reason uh, they really lack in some range capabilities over here so the lizard men are not well known for their good artillery and stuff as i already mentioned on the pro side you can also mention it on, again on the con side um, besides the dinosaurs um, the units are an average not really have not haven't uh, have not a high tier character like chaos units or uh, uh, or high elf units but they have also not a complete low tier character like the uh, skaven or, uh, or the greenskins so it's in a mid-range area but if you leave out all these dinosaurs you will see find or you will see or you will notice that the amount of armor and the amount of leadership is an average mediocre it's mediocre it's it's not really good it's not really bad and um, it, i think it's worth to be mentioned also on the con side uh, that many units have a quite mediocre amount of leadership and armor and as i already explained every arm we have good arms of service but for example the cavalry we have a cavalry it's a quite a decent cavalry but it's not the best and this is in many cases the case <laughs> So I hope you get what I mean. So yeah, let's let's continue over here. Um, yeah, I found nothing else. Let's continue with the lords. So let's talk about the red crested skin chief. I really like this new lord over here. This is a non legendary lord, a very cheap one. You can deploy him for under 1000 credits. Uh, it depends, of course, if you take a mount or which abilities you are going to enable. But on foot, he is a anti large. He has a quite nice anti large borders of 30. His weapon strength overall is quite low. You can say we have just 300. 40 but he has a good amount of ap damage with 220 so this is a very good stats for that price even if as i said the weapon strength overall is not the best the melee defense is 45 the melee attack is 55 he, he's causing poison attack with his melee attack very interesting his amount of armor is 50 and his leadership is 65 not the highest of course he has a quite nice ability warriors crest that will increase the melee attack by 44 and the melee defense by 27 for 30 seconds in some cases this can be quite useful he has two items opal amulet that will increase the damage resistance by 22 percent and potion of strength that will increase the amount of ap damage by 40 percent and the weapon damage by also by 40 percent you can set him on a horned one for 300 credits extra charge then he is has much more mobility of course um a higher weapon strength and all the advantages from a horned one you can sit in on on this new unit the river ductile this new flying a melee attack unit and then he is um he has also increased weapon strength and so on he is a flying unit flying lot then he has no range capability so he has no he cannot shoot he has no uh, no he sh he's not shooting arrows and stuff so it's just for melee combat on the reaper tactile but but also quite interesting and you can set him on an asian staggerdon for uh, extra charge of 1450 credits so nothing more to talk about i really love this new lord i really think this is a very competitive version he's aquatic that means he uh, he's not struggling in water terrain or stuff like that he performing very well in water 
He has a missile resistance of 15%, a charge defense against large, what is also quite nice. He has the fr the, the frenzy ability. I uh, Many of you know this, of course, what, what it is, 12% more weapon damage, 8% more charge bonus, plus 8 melee attack, and he is immune to psychology if the leadership drops under 50%, and then it is constantly. This is quite interesting. Um, he has this new ability, Focus Instincts. This is quite nice. I tested it several times. Uh, so that's, that ability stops Rampage. So if he fights in the front line and dinosaurs and units nearby go on Rampage and are out of control, you can activate this and that stops Rampage. This is very nice ability. Besides from that, nothing special. Um, I really love this new version. I think this is a very competitive lot over here. Uh, on foot or however also on maybe a horned one or a river ductil but i think it's very very cheap very very cheap on foot for under thousand uh, uh, credits and this is for, uh, very good for that performance i think this is a very cost efficient and a very competitive lot over here So let's continue with Sauros Old Blood. Um, Sauros Old Blood has increased stats regarding the Red Crested Skin Chief. When it comes to the weapon strength, we have a much higher weapon strength of 430. In fact, the Sauros Old Blood has a decreased melee attack by 6, but we have a higher melee defense, 52 overall. Uh, we have a bronze shield, uh, what is quite nice. The amount of AP damage is 290, what is very, very high. This is a very high amount for a uh, for a lot in this price area. The price is just about 1,200, 1,300 credits. It depends how many spells and ability, uh, how many abilities you are enabled. This is not a spellcaster. And yeah, uh, you can sit him on a cold one and you can all the... You gain all the benefits from the code one the hit points will increase the weapon strength will increase the speed will increase he's much more mobile than of course or on a carnosaur of course the extra charge for the code one is 200 what is quite decent for a carnosaur of course much more 900 credits extra charge besides from that nothing special some low tier abilities full seeker and stand your ground we have a, a item called the horn of kigor that uh, increases the charge bonus by 18% and the melee attack by, by, by 5, 25 and the leadership by 8 for 20 seconds and this will affect, uh, affect all allies in, in a range of 40 meters and another item amulet of itzel that will increase the damage resistance by 66 percent for 18 seconds but besides from that as i said nothing more to talk about also in my opinion a quite decent lord for that price uh, on foot but also of course you can on a carnosaur on a cold one this is a quite decent lord this is a quite decent price good performance nothing more to talk about very cheap version perfect Let's come to the next Lord and the next Lord is a legendary Lord, a new legendary Lord called Tic-Tac-Toe. He always sits on a Pterodon, so he is always on his mount. You cannot unmount him, so he's uh, he flies naturally. He has a weapon strength of 350. This is not really much, but we have a very high amount of AP damage or a very good amount of AP damage, let me say it like this, for, of 245. This is quite nice. The melee attack is uh, 55, the melee defense 50, also quite nice. He's quite unarmored with an amount of 30. This is quite garbage. The leadership is 70, okay for the lizard man. Um, he has a physical resistance of 20%. This is quite nice. So we have a very low amount of armor, but with 20% phys physical resistance and a melee defense of 50, this is a quite good combination. The missile resistance is also there of 15%. He is causing fear and has some uh, mediocre abilities, you can say, Deadly Onslaught, uh, Master of the Skies. And uh, one is quite nice, drop Sphere of Tapok, that will use a bombardment spell and causing some good damage in a small area. Um, you can activate this just one time, this is the only problem, but besides from that, it's quite okay. He has some good items, Mask of Heavens, that will increase the melee defense by 9, the amount of armor by 18, 
constantly a quite nice item i would always activate this over here and blade of the ancient skies that will increase the amount of ap damage by 15 percent the weapon damage by 15 percent and the melee attack by 15 constantly so the items i would always enable so the, the buff items are quite expensive so you pay nearly 400 credits extra charge but buff items are in my opinion worth the price because you because you get increased stats constantly and this is very nice um they are only active if he flies but that means of course that it is always active because he always flies on his pterodon even if he is if he is fighting or in melee combat on ground um i'm pretty sure that it should be active because he's he always sits on his pterodon besides from that nothing special another lord would uh, i would say um very nice you can deploy him in a vanguard position i'm not sure i, I wouldn't do that um, uh, not an important feature but uh, the lord overall is quite nice also very very cheap you can deploy him for about um yeah it depends what you are going to enable but usually 1600 credits if you enable the items and drop sphere of tapok this is a quite decent price for quite decent performance um uh, he, he is causing fear he has a good physical resistance the the uh, ap damage output is good the midi stats are good so nothing more to talk about i really like this new legendary lord very well done nothing more to talk about let's continue So let's come to Krokgar and um, if we compare Soros Altblood to Krokgar, what is a quite similar lord, we can see that we have a better version of the Soros Altblood. We have increased stats, the weapon strength is a bit increased, the melee attack and the hit points, but not significant. The melee defense is in fact decreased regarding the melee defense of Soros Altblood, but the main difference is definitely the bonus versus large. Crocker is an anti-large lord, so he has a bonus versus large of 30 he has increased also in an increased amount of ap damage of 310 what is quite nice he has a um he, you can set him on a cold one on a hornet one or on grimlock his legendary carnosaur on grimlock his stats will increase massively so we have then a, a weapon strength of four, 540 this is massive this is an incredible high um, of course, he's then much more mobile also, and his hit points will increase much uh, about about 2,400. Uh, about 2,400. This is quite nice. And um, also, we have a much increased amount of AP damage. Uh, we have 375, and the bonus versus large is a bit higher. We have 35. So gr on Grimlock, it's probably the most popular version. But I would definitely also say. On some cases, you can also bring Crocker on foot. His stats on foot are also not uh, not bad. The weapon strength is 440. This is quite nice. He's quite heavily armored with 95. But I would definitely say Sauros Old Blood is also an option. So if you need 400 or 500 credits for another unit or stuff like that, you can also pick a Sauros Old Blood. I, I would definitely say it's also an option. If you have the money left, pick Crocker because Crocker has has much better stats or better stats and on Grimlock he is definitely a massive monster anti-large monster and very very dangerous for many foes the price depends how many abilities you are going to enable but it is about 1700 credits on foot um, he has some mediocre or low tier ability mediocre abilities I would say deadly onslaught and second spawning of Xotl but um, this is not worth to be mentioned swiftness of Itzel is quite imp important or very very uh, very good thing over a very good ability this is this will cause an explosion if he is stuck in a group of infantry or stuff like that activate this ability um, and uh, uh, explosion will happen and then he is free and his speed will also increase by 36 percent what is quite a lot so this is a quite important ability over here you can activate this all the time the cooldown is 90 seconds so there is no gap this is quite nice very nice ability i would always activate this and we have a very good item a hand of gods um, this will shoot some lasers out of his chest or something like that is a magic is magic missiles is a missile attack you can activate this two times and um, but it's quite accurate so um, also on long distance he you you will hit your target quite nice and it will cause a lot of damage 
So um, besides from that, nothing more to talk about. Krogar is a very good lord, a very strong lord. The price is decent. Um, on Grimlock, uh, it's, he's of course much more expensive, but the performance is superior. He can then compete against massive monsters like Kolek and stuff like that. It's very dangerous for any large entity on the battlefield, and for this case, Crocker is really good. As I said, also in some t cases on foot, maybe also on a horned one in some case or a cold one. Um, all options are, in my opinion, quite decent. Nothing more to talk about over here. But as I said, Asaurus Allblood is definitely also an option. So let's come to the next three lords and this is one lord in three different versions. The Slan Mage Priests with the law, one with the law of light, with the law of heavens and with the high elf magical law. All three laws are definitely not the most, the best magical laws in the game, but really good ones in my opinion. I'm a big fan of the high, uh, of the law of heavens. Uh, the Law of Heavens is, in my opinion, a quite underrated magical lore. Uh, in competitive gaming, um, the most player will ignore the Law of Heavens. But my personal opinion is that the Law of Heaven is a quite good magical lore. Um, besides from that, quite also quite nice to know that the Lizard Men are able to cast spells from the High Elf magical lore. You wouldn't expect something like this. This is probably something has has to do with the storyline of Warhammer. I'm not sure you guys probably know it, but if you want to cast spells from the High Elf magical lore, um, this is you can you can cast, you can bring the Slan Mage Priest with that magical lore. This, this is quite nice to know. Um, the melee stats are uh, all the same. Um, you cannot mount these guys. They have no mount available. They have just their seat, <laughs> toilet seat or whatever this is, uh, their throne. And on this throne, however, the stats are not really good. They are not designed to fight in melee combat. The stats are really bad. Um, even for a spellcaster, they are really not good. So in, in re really rare emergency cases, they can go in a group of infantry or stuff like that. But as I said, it's it's complete garbage. That's, that's the amount of AP damage is 80. I mean, give me a complete break. We have a melee attack of 24, uh, all three causing magical attacks, of course, but you can forget this completely. Um, we have uh, the abilities are all the same except for one ability. So we have one ability on each lord that is different. For example, on the law uh, on the slan mage priest with the high elf magical law, we have the shield of Sephiria. Um, or Shield of Safari. Um, on the light version, we have Exorcism, and on the Slan Mage Priest with the Law of Heavens, we have Rolling Skies. All three abilities are just active if you're casting spells. And these abilities, I'm not a fan of these abilities because I think this is um, it, the performance is very bad uh, because you don't cast all the time and. The, uh, just for a short period of time for a shot just for a uh, for some seconds uh, this thing is active and uh, in my opinion it's not worth it I disable in any case on any Lord always all abilities that are just active if he casts so um, I, I really don't like these these kind of abilities besides from that we have some good stuff Banishment, for example, on all three lords. Banishment is here a ability, so you don't need Winds of Magic for that, and this is quite nice. You can activate this just two times, of course, but anyway, this is quite, this is really, really nice. As I said, you don't need Winds of Magic for this Vortex spell, so quite nice. And Banishment is, meanwhile, a very mighty spell, so it's the damage output is really gigantic. Then we have Shield of the Old Ones on all three types. That will give a 22% damage resistance and a leadership buff by 8 to allies for 70 seconds. Also quite nice in some cases, definitely. And then we have Greater Arc and Conduit. Nothing more to talk about. Um, the spells, every one of you know the Law of the Heavens, the Law of Light and the law, High Elf Magical Law. Um, the items are all, all the same. We have Blood Statue of Spite. All three Lords have the same items. That will cause uh, yes, a direct damage item that will cause damage to combatants. 
in a range of 100 meters and then we have aura of quetzal for 25 seconds the melee defense will increase by 27 and the amount of armor by 30 but you can leave out both in my opinion uh, it's complete garbage aura of quetzal because even with the increased uh, armor and melee defense it doesn't really matter you have to watch that he will he's not getting attacked from enemy lords and stuff because he will die very fast in my opinion so uh, the only problem is in my opinion that uh, no mount is available so in most cases lord master mundi is a more competitive pick on can because you can mount master mundi if you take uh, if you don't want to take a mount you can also take of course a slain ma slain mage priest because he's much cheaper than master mundi you can uh, deploy all three versions for about um, it depends quite a lot on how many spells you enable but 1600 1700 credits the price is also is, is is quite decent but i would definitely say lord master mundi is in uh, any case they're mo more competitive because you can mount him i wouldn't bring a slant mage priest just on his toilet seat this is in my opinion not worth it because he's really he's really vulnerable he's he's very steady that means he will is very also a large target so it means that and your enemy can snipe out these guys very fast and with artillery with a goon squad with uh, anti-large monsters so it's it's i wouldn't pick these guys i would definitely say i would leave them out so let's come to lord master mundi lord master mundi has has increased stats um or just on his toilet seat if we if we compare them to the slime mage priest so we have a weapon strength of 360 a bit of increased hit hit points uh 150 over here plus 150 nothing special nothing worth to talk about but um, lord master mundi is able to sit on his legendary uh stegadon slack so this is quite nice then he is really a dangerous target a dangerous foe for enemy um yeah, for your enemy he has a bonus versus infantry of 18 his weapon strength will increase dramatically 480 this is nearly 500 for a spellcaster i mean give me a complete break this is incredible high we have uh, much increased hit points 7500 about uh, the amount of armor is 140 this is incredible and we have a high charge bonus of 70 so this staggered on really causing a lot of trouble and he is still a um spellcaster as i said and lord master mundi is a quite mighty spellcaster on the staggered on uh, the staggered on also causing missile damage and the missile damage of the staggered on some skinks are on the top and throwing some uh, spears around and this causing also poison damage so they're quite interesting all everything over here and i would never pick lord master mundi just on his toilet seat always pick him in combination with the staggered on it's definitely worth it the extra charge 1200 credits but even though um if you pick lord master mundi pick it with with slack or pick something else uh, other lord but never pick him on his toilet seat uh, then he you have nearly the same version like a slant mage priest lord master mundi is a hybrid spell cast you can say so he has different spells available but very good ones we have uh, a mix out of the lore of heavens and the lore of light and the lore, the high elf magical lore so we have uh, for example net of Amentok available quite nice harmonic convergence in my opinion also a very good spell i really love this spell over here you need just six wins of magic and the uh, the performance is really good i mean for 20 the, the for 22 seconds the melee attack will increase by 26 and the melee defense by 27 this is a quite nice spell in my opinion for the for that price then we have curse of the midnight wind also really good decreases the amount of armor of 30 and the melee attack by 26 very 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 nice i really love curse of the midnight wind then we have comment of cousin dora nothing more to talk about so really good spell selection over here then we have apotheosis that will uh, heal the regeneration spell and then arcan arcan unforging um is also a direct damage spell but in my opinion i would disable it it's too much winds of magic 
and um, it's not so effective in my personal opinion. Then we have some uh, very good items, Sunburst standard of Hexotel that will increase the missile resistance by 12% and the melee defense by 9 constantly. I would always activate this and we have also some good abilities, for example, the very the uh, unique, very rare ability just available on Lord Master Mundi, Ruination of Cities. This is a massive wind spell. Um, it is quite random, but if there are some a massive amount of units on one spot, Ruination of Cities can cause a tremendous amount of damage. So I would, even if it is quite expensive, I would definitely activate this. You can activate or you can use this two, set two times. Um, and as I said, I would definitely activate this, even if it is quite random. Um, Banishment is here also an ability. You can activate this two times. I would always activate this ability or enable this ability over here. Very, very strong. Shield of the Old Ones that will provide a damage resistance by 22% and will increase the leadership by 8. Uh, we, uh, we have the same on the Slan Mage Priest. And um, I would definitely also acti enable this. This is a very strong um, ability over here. Very good one. Then we have Greater Arc and Conduit and Rolling Skies. This you can disable. I don't think this is worth to pick. But we, but besides from that, nothing more to talk about. He's a really mighty spellcaster. He has superior abilities. A very very good spell selection. Good item. Very strong item. And on his um, um, legend uh, on his legendary Staggerdon, however, he's a very strong combatant. Very strong foe for your enemy and um, Lord Master Mundi is a mighty lord and even if he is very expensive on Slack uh, you don't have to forget the price is nearly about 3000 or over 3000 credits because you he's also a spellcaster so he's a m very expensive unit as one single unit this is you have to be really careful that you just pick him on the Staggerdon if you are sure that your opponent is not able to snipe him out very fast because he's very very expensive but i would definitely ca count him as cost efficient as competitive as a competitive pick because he's very very mighty so let's come to the last lord and then uh, a new legendary lord tehin hawin sorry if i mispronounced this tehin hawin it's not so easy um he is unfortunately the most expensive lord he's quite intro but he's quite interesting um you can sit him on a horned one on a river ductile or on an asian staggerdon with the engine of god this is quite interesting this is a new asian staggerdon with this staggerdon you have this burning alignment um, ability this is another you can say massive damage output um, with this uh, wind spell you have a da massive damage output with this wind spell you can activate it two times it is quite mighty because you can um, it, it, it causes tremendous amount of damage in a, in a to a group of uh, to, to infantry groups especially if the groups are very straight aligned in in, in, in the front line uh, if they get engaged in a frontline fight um, if they are very straight aligned um, this is very devastating so uh, it, it's definitely uh, qu quite nice so you can sit him on this staggerdon for 1100 credits extra charge this is in my opinion a quite decent thing because it's it's not so much in my opinion so uh, Lord Master Mundi Slug has a extra charge of 1200 credits of course he has different stats but even though I think 1000 100 for this engine of the gods Stegodon is quite nice for this ancient Stegodon. He is then a really dangerous throw with a weapon strength of 480, a charge bonus of 75 and a, uh, hit points um, are, he has massive hit points of 7600, about 7600 hit points. This is massive. The amount of armor is also on all, as I on all Asian Stegodons massive, so he has 140 then. But you can sit him also on a River Ductile or on a Horned One, as I explained. He is a spellcaster, so he casting spells from the um from the law of beasts and the law of beasts has a quite popular spell flock of doom the most important spell on the list over here flock of doom is a very cheap spell you'd only need the six winds of magic the cooldown time is just 30 seconds so you can use it really several times over a game and the damage output is really really good and you don't have to forget flock of doom ignores um 
um, um, armor. So it doesn't matter if a unit is very heavily armored or not. Flock of Doom will cause always the same amount of damage and this is in my opinion quite decent. Besides from that I'm not really a fan of the Law of Beasts cause a transformation of Kadon that will cast as uh, or summon a Manticore mm, it's in my opinion not so efficient. Curse of An Anrahai is also not so good you can pick this um, but it's quite expensive for 11 wins of magic. You can decrease the melee attack by 26 and the speed by 24% and the accuracy by 60%. It's okay, but uh, there's better stuff. In the most cases, I, I just enable one spell from the Law of Beasts and this is Flock of Doom. Amber Spear in some cases, so you have a magic missile, some ranged attack. Okay. We have uh, two items, Plague of Sotek, that will increase the damage resistance by 22% and the leadership by 12% uh, constantly, so I would always enable this, and Blade of the Serpent's Tongue, that will increase the charge bonus by 8% and will cause poison constantly, so always enable this, of course, if you take Tian Haoin. Um, we have three abilities, so mediocre abilities, nothing special, Arcan Conduit, Stand Your Ground and Wild Heart, nothing worth to talk about. Besides from that, he is even on foot or for a spell cast, has some good melee combat stats, the amount of IP damage is 280, um, what is quite nice, the weapon strength overall is 400, also quite nice, we have a melee attack of 55, very good for a spell caster, he is causing poison, the melee defense is 45 also nice um, the amount of armor is 72 and uh, 75 and he has a quite good leadership with 85 for a lizard man unit but besides from that i have to tell you i don't i don't see any purpose for this guy over here i think this is not cost efficient i think this is not a co competitive pick because you at at the end you have a lord with the law of uh, with the law of beasts with flock of doom okay quite nice and you can sit him of course on the Asian Stegadon with the engine of the gods for example but uh, it doesn't really matter because you pay a lot of money then you have the uh, you pay over 3000 credits about and um, for this price you can pick the Asian Stegadon with engine of the gods as a single unit and another for uh, for example Crocker in addition or another spell caster like um, Lord Master Mundi. I, I think Lord Master Mundi on Slack is a much better spellcaster version. I think Tihin Hawin is for that just with the Law of Beasts. It's not worth to pick him. On foot is also, he has some nice stats for a spellcaster, but is too expensive to pick it f f just for the Law of Beasts and some good stats for spellcaster. This is, this is not enough. So I would leave him out even on the Rabadoctyl or on the Hornet one, I would definitely say it's not worth the pick. I would leave him out completely, unfortunately, sorry. So let's talk about the heroes and the hero selection is quite well stocked. Also the Lord selection is really good and we have also here very good heroes available. First of all, let's talk about the Skink Chief. The Skink Chief is a um yeah a very cheap hero you can deploy him for about 500 credits on foot but more decent is to deploy him on a pterodon then the price is about 800 credits um his purpose is to shoot so in mini combat he is complete garbage he has some bad stats you can say the weapon strength is 310 the amount of ap damage 80 33 melee attack complete garbage armor is 30 his purpose is to shoot his missiles the weapons uh, the missile damage is really really good with 470 he is causing poison attacks very interesting and um, the amount of ap missile damage is 35 also quite good he has a missile resistance for for, for itself of 15 percent he, he's causing fear i'm not sure yeah just on the pterodon of course um, he can fire once moving very very interesting so you can also flee you can also retreat uh, if uh, other unit would uh, chasing is chasing you and then you can shoot your mis poison missiles on them and slow them down and this is quite interesting fire once moving is always good and then he has an ability called uh, named cold blooded then we have an ability called slippery but n not worth to talk about will increase the melee defense and the speed but 
as I said, really not worth to talk about. We have so two items. One is Wardrum of Xahutek that will increase the leadership by four, the charge bonus by four percent, and the speed by six percent constantly. But it's it's really doesn't make any difference. I would leave it out. And potion of foolhardiness that will increase the charge bonus. Not not worth to talk about. You can also sit him on a Staggerdon or an Asian Staggerdon, but the best way is to bring him on a Terradon. Um, with the ability disabled and no um, uh, no items enabled the price is 800 credits and this is the best way to play with him he uh, can drop ro rocks also from the pterodon with the pterodon has her own ability to drop some rocks or bombs or whatever you would like to call it it's all quite also quite nice but Besides from that, nothing more. A really good option over here. A really annoying foe. This is an annoying unit if you're go going to play against it. It is really annoying if the if there is a skin chief in the air constantly shooting and it's very hard to get him because he, he smiths are causing poison and stuff. This is a very annoying unit for an enemy and this is of course very good for you. And for 800 credits, this is very cost efficient. So let's come to the Sauroscar Veteran. This thing over here, you can set it on a cold one or a Carnosaur for 1100 credits. The extra charge is quite heavy for the Carnosaur. The weapon strength on foot is 380. The amount of AP damage is 250. What is very good, in fact, for a hero. Very good stats over here. Superior stats for a hero, I would say, when it comes to the weapon strength. And he has a bonus versus large. So also just on foot, he has a bonus versus large. He is an anti-large hero. His melee defense is 47, very good. His melee attack 38, that's that is okay. Um, he has a amount of armor is 85, so also okay. He has a bronze shield. Um, he has a missile resistance of 15%, has a charge defense against large and some um, low tier abilities for seeker deadly onslaught not worth to, to not nothing worth to talk about on the item side potion of strength and plague of Domi Do dominion um as i said not not worth to talk about i will leave this out over here you can disable any anything in my opinion um with with all abilities and items disabled the prices on foot 800 credits and as i said on a carnosaur plus 1100 credits 1900 then overall this is quite pricey but uh, as a single unit it is a quite good hero the stats are very very good but in the most cases the more popular version is of course on a carnosaur then he is a very very mighty foe uh, of course the hit points increases a lot the weapon strength and so on all these good advantages from the carnosaur the benefits he will gain that then so in the most cases you are going to see a Soros Scar veteran on a carnosaur but this is a quite pricey pricey combination then of course but uh, as a single unit as i said for that price also really good so the next units are two um, skin priests one has the law of beasts and one the law of heavens so in my opinion nothing worth to talk about over here both you can sit both on a pterodon on a staggerdon on the asian staggerdon or on an asian staggerdon with the engine of the gods this is new also quite interesting we have um uh, on the ability side nothing special um, white heart on the uh, on the on the skin priest with the law of beasts this is also just active if you cast and rolling skies on the heavens uh, law of uh, law of uh, ma magical law of heaven version this is also not just active if you cast and as i said i really don't like these ab kind of abilities besides from that nothing more to talk about the skin chief for itself is complete garbage so don't never send him in any melee combat or stuff like that this is not really good the best way is him probably on a pterodon also maybe you, c you can make him as a mighty foe on an asian staggerdon and stuff but this is of course very pricey so the uh, uh, extra charge on the asian staggerdon is 1850 credits and on the asian staggerdon with the engine of the guns 1950 credits and on a normal staggerdon 1550 credits is of course very expensive but um, in my opinion, you can, you can bring him on foot, but you can bring him also on a Terradon, on an Asian Stegadon. It depends on your gameplay, on your tactic, on your build. So nothing, not much more to talk about. Let's continue here. 
So let's come to Lord Croak, and Lord Croak is a legendary hero. You can pick him just one time, like the Green Knight. He is a very unique unit overall. He is a spellcaster, but you cannot choose from spells. So he has three standard spells, Deliverance of Itza 1, 2 and 3. All three spells are explosion spells, causing a quite heavy amount of damage. The Deliverance of Itza uh, needs 6 wins of magic. Deliverance of Itza 2 needs 12 wins of magic and Deliverance of Itza 3 needs 18 wins of magic and uh, you might guess it the more magic you need the bigger the explosion is or the bigger the damage output is and um, this is quite interesting the best use is of course on huge amounts of any enemy units if you are uh, if there are huge amounts uh, of or if your opponent blobs with his uh, creates a huge blob of units on the front line or stuff um, uh, this is the best use is here because it's not a wind spell it doesn't go straight it is a cycle a, a circle so um, on a huge blob of units this is the best use and the explosion causing a tremendous amount of damage you can choose between two abilities supreme shield of the old ones what is very good it's well it's a ward safe ability for 80 seconds the damage resistance you will get a damage resistance by 44 percent in a range of 40 meters this is very very good 44 percent damage resistance is incredible high um, then we have greater arc and conduit will increase the um, will improve the recharge rate and increase the power re reserves and on the item side we have gold death mask this is constantly around a range of 55 meters that will reduce the melee attack of your opponent by minus nine so quite interesting but also in melee combat i mean we have very bad stats on the melee defense i mean 12 give me a complete break over here this is complete garbage but the melee attack is 26 and uh, he causing magical attacks of course the amount of armor is 45 it's not really high as i already said he is unbreakable but he has a huge weapon strength this is incredible the weapon strength is for 450 so i would say this is the highest weapon strength among all spell casters so 450 for a spell caster is massive give me a break the amount of ap damage therefore is just 120 so this is not really good and as i already said the melee defense and attack is really really low he is causing he causing fear the missile resistance is 40 percent 40 percent is massive so it's not so easy to to kill him with artillery and tank gunners and stuff 40 percent missile resistance is extreme we have a magic resistance also of 25 percent very very strong also here a fire weakness by minus 25 percent this is of course a huge disadvantage uh, because it will uh, make fire damage more effective against him he is causing fear as i already said and beside this nothing special he's a strider so he will not get any penalties from terrain he um, is unbreakable as i already said and yeah besides from that nothing more the only problem he's a really superior unit i really love this new unit i really love the spells i really love everything over here the only problem is a little bit little bit in my opinion their price the price is 1600 credits this is quite a lot so it depends a little bit how many abilities you enable and uh, items but if we enable golden death mask and uh, supreme shield of the old ones what is really um, really good um, the price is about 1700 credits and this is of course a, a lot of stuff for a hero this is the only problem so I'm not sure if it is worth to bring him. Um, I would still say it is worth to bring him because the the performance is really, really superior. This, uh, and uh, these three uh, deliverance of Itza spells are really, really strong. Um, uh, you can use it several times. And um, for this reason, I would say it's still worth to bring him in some cases, in some builds, definitely not in all, because the price is really, really high. But that's everything from the hero side, let's continue with the infantry. So let's continue with the infantry and let's begin with the cheapest version over here, the skin cohort. This is a low tier unit, uh, they don't count as a meat shield or they are not expendable, count as expendable. 
uh, but they are quite low tier. We have some really lower stats. The melee attack is 20, the melee defense is 24, the weapon strength is 25, uh, the amount of AP damage is 5, the amount of armor is 30, the sh he has, they have a bronze shield, um, but they are aquatic, what is quite nice. Um, besides from that, nothing we want to talk about. This is okay for 300 credits and definitely a good, a, a good, a good thing in many matchups. If you need, if you have to increase the amount of units in your army against Skaven, against Greenskins, against Beastmen, Skin Cohort, uh, are good for that. Of course, you don't have to expect any wonders, but uh, as a cheap unit, this is quite okay uh, for 300 credits. Uh, you get for 300 credits what you pay and it's okay it's not good it's not bad it's okay and it is necessary because you can you have a lot of monsters and expensive units so you need also a unit like the skin cohort for your army so in many builds the skin cohorts are really really good or necessary you can say So let's come to a, yeah, it's not a new version of the skin cohort. It's a separate unit, the red crested skins, but they are, uh, yeah, this is, this are skin cohorts that are causing AP damage, what is quite nice, and poison attacks. So I really love this new unit over here. We have now a, a low tier unit that is able to cause AP damage, and this is really cool. Um, we have a decreased melee defense regarding the normal skin cohorts because these guys, the red crested skins, are not shielded, so also the melee defense is not so good. Uh, but besides from that, everything is a bit better. We have a higher leadership. The leadership is 62 on the normal skin cohorts. It was 55, 55 for a low tier unit on the Lizardman roster. This is okay. The hit points are nearly the same. The melee attack is a bit increased on the red crested, red crested skins plus 6. As I said, they're causing poison attack, but it's very, very, very strong because this many of your other units will benefit from that. This is very strong. We have the same amount of weapon strength, but the red crested skins causing AP damage and the amount is 20. And this is very, very good for a unit for 575 credits. And the red crested skins have the frenzy ability that will increase the weapon damage by 12%, the charge bonus by 8% and the melee attack by 8%. And they are immune to psychology if the leadership is lower than 50%. This is not uh, on the normal skin cohort. So, in summary, this I really love this new unit. Beautiful to create a unit like this, a low tier unit that is able to cause AP damage and poison attacks. Really cool unit, a really important unit, really efficient unit, cost efficient, competitive. I really love it. Um, perfect. Let's come to the Sauros Spears. The Sauros Spears are anti-large. The price is 750 credits, so we're talking about a mid-range infantry unit. They have the charge defense against large foes. They have, let me take a look, a weapon strength of 42, uh, what is quite nice, quite good in fact. The amount of AP damage is 12. It's not really, uh, it's definitely garbage, but uh, it's definitely not good, but it's still not garbage. Let me say it like this, 12 is okay for a unit that is not declared as an AP damage unit. And we have a bonus versus large of 15, what is quite nice. Leadership is 75, the amount of armor is 60. Uh, the melee attack is 24, what is quite low in fact, but we have a good melee defense of 32. So uh, we have a charge defense against large, as I already said, and they have primal instincts. Primal instincts will increase the charge bonus by 16% and the melee attack by 8 if the hit points are greater than 20% constantly. But uh, they are, it's, it's possible that they go on rampage, this is the disadvantage. So, um, generally spoken, in summary, um, this is a cost-efficient unit, in my opinion. Don't have to expect any wonders for 750 credits, it is okay. Um, the, we have a good weapon strength, a quite okay melee defense. The amount of armor is okay for um, not really high, 16, 60 is not really high. But the leadership of 75 is okay for the lizard man. So, not much more to talk about, anti-large bonus, 750 credits, mid-range infantry unit. So there is also a normal version, the Saurus Warriors available. They, these guys have a decreased melee defense, but it's still okay with 28. Therefore, the melee attack is increased 29. 
it's okay. The weapon strength is 52, what is really high now. So for 750 credits, the price is the same like the Sauros Spears. Uh, we have a huge weapon strength of 52 and uh, the amount of AP damage increases also a lot. We have 18 now and this is quite interesting. This is not a AP damage unit, but the amount of, of AP damage is quite good. In fact, for, for a unit like this, um, uh, we have 18 over here. This is quite nice. So for 750 credits, I would say the Soros War is um, more efficient. If you need anti-large bonus, if you need in a mid-range infantry area or in a, uh, from Soros Warriors anti-large unit, take the spear version. But the Soros Warriors are, in my opinion, the better version because the weapon strength is massively increased. Um, we have a good amount of AP damage, much better on than on the Sauros Spear version. As I said, just if you if you want the if you if you need the anti-large bonus, take the Spear version. In all other cases, the Sauros Warriors are preferable because for the same price you get a lot of you get a lot more. And the de decrease of the melee defense is very is minimal. So we have just uh, um, um, we have the, uh, nearly the same melee defense on both versions, so just advantages over here, um, nothing more to talk about. So from both versions are also shielded versions available. Let's start with the Sauer Spears shield. Um, there are no changes except for uh, higher melee defense, so for 50 credits more the melee defense increases by plus 6, so we have then 30, uh, 38 melee defense. So I would definitely say it's worth it, it's just for 50 credits, so I would prefer the shield version here. We have also the Soros Warriors with shield, the same thing here. Um, they have a bronze shield, um, the Soros Spears have also a bronze shield, I forgot to say this, the Soros Spears with shields have also a bronze shield. And we have here on the Sauros Warriors with shields uh, increased melee defense by 6, also for 50 credits more and in my opinion worth to pick that always, I would always pick the shielded versions over here because we have a bronze shield, we have a bit increased melee defense and uh, for, for a little amount of money such so 50 credits is not really much. This is really nice over here. Or well, the shielded versions are always preferable, let me say like this. So let's come to the first regiment of renown unit, the cohort of Zotek. The red is a regiment of renown version of the red crested skins, what is quite interesting. They have a melee attack, increased melee attack by plus six and increased melee defense by plus eight. So this is quite nice. Um, they are unbreakable. So they have a leadership of 100. This not always means that they are unbreakable. So a giant has also a leadership of 100, but you need an additional ability that is called unbreakable. But in this case, the court of Sotek have that ability, so they will never run off and fight to the bitter end. And this is really, really cool. Besides from that, um, no changes. We have the Frenzy ability. We already had that also on the normal uh, Red Crested Skinks. Um, they have an ability called Refuse, Refuse to Die. Um, if the ability is active, um, you can activate this and these guys can simply not die. This is quite interesting, but very important. That doesn't mean that they, they will get no damage. So they will still get damage, but the entity uh, amount of entities will stay um, at the same point, for example, if you activate this in the in, directly in the beginning before you engage in, a, in, in the first fight against a unit, they have 90 entities, they will get damaged during um, the, the charge in and the fight, but the entities will stay on 90 models. But this also means if um, this ability will get, uh, yeah, the duration will end, and your, for example, your unit is uh, runs out of hit points, then all units will die at once. So the only benefit over here is that the damage output or the performance stays at one point. So for example, uh, you fight better with 90 models than with 40, so the damage output is much higher or 
um, you also attacked in a tactical sense you can surround your enemy much better with more models of course than with a small entity group so the performance is much better with more models with 90 models than with f 45 models and you can cap this all um, 60 seconds if you activate refuse to die then the model count will stay at the model count what is at this moment so this is a quite nice quite unique ability um, of course it is quite difficult to um, to think all the time to about that to activate this but uh, you don't have to forget these guys are uh, unbreakable so uh, in any case um, they will stay for a qu quite a long time on the battlefield till the die and uh, probably you will activate refuse to die several times over a complete game um, but besides from that, um, nothing more to talk about. We have uh, some good uh, some good stuff over here. The price is 825 credits, so uh, 125 credits, 150 credits more, or 250 credits more. Sorry, 250 credits more than the normal red crested skins. <laughs> and uh, this is a lot of stuff now this is not low tier anymore this is nearly in a mid-range area and nearly on a high tiers level so but uh, still i would say in some cases it's worth to bring these guys because we have increased wheelie stats they are unbreakable they have uh, they have this refuse to die ability so in some cases i would definitely say it's worth it but not in all i would definitely not bring it in, in all matchups against also against uh, heavy armored units um, just in some cases if you have money left. So let's come to the next unit, also a regiment of renown unit, the legions of Chaka. This is a regiment of renown version of the Saurus Spears. This is an anti-large unit. They uh, have the same amount of uh, anti-large bonus like the normal Saurus Spears 15. They have the same amount of weapon strength, AP damage, so nothing changed over here. But we have much increased melee stats. We have a much in higher melee defense by plus 13 this is massive we have now a melee defense of 51 this is hefty and uh, amount of armor is also increased by 15 so we have now 75 what is quite nice the leadership is uh, increased by 10 85 also okay or quite nice the melee attack is increased by plus 5 we have now 29 this is still garbage so not really good these guys have a um, unique ability called shield of chaka that will uh, give uh, provide uh, a, a missile resistance of 44 percent for 25 seconds in a range of 40 meters so this will also affect allies quite nice but besides from that no changes the main difference is here that these guys have massively increased um, melee stats um, melee attack is not so much increased but the amount of armor and melee defense this is quite quite good um, but the extra charge is also quite hefty. We have uh, extra charge of 300 credits. I mean, give me a break. This is massive. Now the price is 1,100 credits and uh, you see it or you guess it, um, the, uh, the price of a group of temple guards is 1,200 credits. So you, for 100 credits more, you get a group of temple guards and for this reason, um, these guys still causing no AP damage, no significant amount. And as I always say, if you pay for a unit for over 1000 credits, of course for a infantry unit, you probably w are going to, you would like to cause uh, AP damage. And for this reason, I would pay 100 credits extra charge and get a group of temple guards. I would say it's never worth to bring the legions of Chaka, even if the melee defense is massive. So we have 51, um, for example a group of temple guards has 38 so we can see the melee defense is massive but i would still say it's not worth to bring these guys uh, i would prefer the normal uh, the, a group of temple guards for 100 credits more so let's come directly to the temple guards the temple guards is the only elite infantry unit of the roster 
and they are anti-large unit, they are halberd unit, this means they are anti-large unit, the bonus is 16, what is quite good, and the amount of AP damage is 29, overall is the weapon strength 42, really good, the amount of melee defense with 38 is good, we have a melee attack of 32, this is okay, not really, not really good, they are quite heavily armored for lizardman infantry, 85 is the amount, and they have a bronze shield, what is quite nice, they have a charge defense against large, but Besides from that, nothing special. The leadership is very, very high. This is a very significant point. We have a leadership of 90. This is very good for Lizardman Infantry. So this is a very elite unit. The price is 1,200 credits. This is cost efficient. This is worth, and it is really important, uh, the Temple Guards, because this is the only AP damage unit on the roster. As I said, the Saurus Warriors also causing a good amount with 18, but the Temple Guard, this is the pure damage, AP damage unit with an amount of 29. This is really strong and they are anti-large um, of course many many player uh, said that it's uh, it's uh, unfortunate that we don't have any any melee combat anti-infantry version uh, elite version um, this is a bit of problem I see this the bonus we have a bonus versus large this uh, the uh, fight superior against large entities but they are also really good against infantry units the, don't get me wrong the stats are not only good for large entities so they are also good against infantry units but of course if we compare the temple guards to other elite um, anti-large units and elite high tier units of other factions they are definitely not one of the best they are in a mid-range area i would say but they are still very important for for the for for the lizard men as I said, unfortunately, there's just an anti-large version available. We have no other anti-infantry version stuff, but it's still good. The performance against infantry is still good, and um, they are really important, and they are cost-efficient and worth to pick in many matchups. So there is also a Regiment of Renown version available, the Star Chamber Guardians. These guys are unbreakable. Um, they have an increased melee attack by plus 6 and an increased melee defense by plus 13 and now it, 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 this is quite interesting because they have now the same amount of melee defense like the uh, Legion of Chaka we have 51 this is this is really really good um, besides from that no changes a uh, really important point is that these guys causing magical attacks and these guys have the guardian ability that means they will provide your lord and a hero in a range of 30 meters a physical resistance by 18 percent very very important the only problem what i have over here is that these guys are really pricey this is 1500 credits it's 300 credits extra charge this is a lot of stuff this is the first target of enemy artillery and stuff and it's very hefty 1500 credits so i'm not sure in the meta game how often you guys going to see these this star chamber guardians uh, i would still say that i would count them as yeah i would count them as cost efficient especially because of the guardian ability but i still would say it's quite difficult it's always quite dangerous bring a unit for 1500 1600 credits same on the high elf roster or the uh, dark elf roster because uh, this unit um, you spend a huge amount of money in one infantry unit and it's the first target for your enemy and with a fate of buna and stuff like that these guys melting also away so mm, it's 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 always dangerous um, but as I said, uh, just the unit itself is cost efficient. But the other problem is uh, you don't want to spend too much money on the infantry roster. You don't want to spend 1,500 credits on an infantry unit. You want to spend that money on a dinosaur. Uh, typically, when you build, create lizardman builds, and for this reason, I definitely would say um, I wouldn't. I would say they are not really. Uh, a competitive pick even if i would count them as cost efficient i say i in the most cases i would leave them out and pick a dinosaur or anything like that and take normal temple guards this is my opinion because it's there too pricey for 1300 or 1350 credits it it would be much more decent
Alright, so let's come to the missile infantry and let's start with the skin cohort with javelins. These guys have a price of 400 credits. The melee stats are for that price or for a missile infantry unit like this not bad. They are in fact quite okay. The melee defense is 24, they are shielded, they have a bronze shield, was quite interesting. The weapon strength is 25 and this is okay for a missile infantry unit in this price range. So for a short period of time they can hold the line or damage other low tier units. This is okay, but of course don't expect anyone as they are not designed to fight in melee combat. But there is much worse stuff around, so this is okay. We have a missile range of 80 and this is the biggest problem in my opinion. They have to be really really close to the target they would like to shoot. They are not able to fire whilst moving. The missile damage therefore is really good with 18 and also we have a quite good amount of AP damage with 4. Also here don't expect any wonders but 4 is much better than on many other missile infantry units so this is okay. The most important point is that these guys causing poison. Um, th this is this is very strong if the enemy is poisoned and a very strong characteristic over here. They are aquatic like, like many other uh, so, uh, Lizardman units and yeah besides from that not much more to talk about for 400 credits this is quite decent even if I would say there there is better stuff around on the Lizardman roster because um, as I said the small missile range is is a bit of a problem but for 400 credits as I said it's it's still okay it, it, this is quite a decent unit over here but uh, better is to pick a group of chameleon skins of course this is probably the only unit in the missile infantry roster that is designed to run with your main army corps. The other units are more or less kite units, harass units, um, which are able to get deployed in a vanguard position. These guys over here are designed to walk with your main army corps, put them in the second or third row, let the units get engaged in, in melee combat and then they can throw their spears. Um, we have one massive major problem with these guys besides the other stuff I already told you. They're running out of ammunition very, very fast. So um, you will see in this example over here how fast these guys will run out, of, uh, run out of ammunition. And this is of course a problem. So as I said, um, nothing more to add to this, uh, to my comment to these guys. Everything is said, so let's continue.
So let's come to the Skink Skirmishers. This is a, uh, they have the same price. They can fire whilst moving. This is interesting. Um, then can, can be deployed in a Vanguard position. It, this was also not possible on the Skink Cohorts of Chevalence. It's always nice. But we have much decreased stats. The missile range is decreased by minus 10, just 70 now. Um, the missile damage is 15, so decreased by minus 2. We have also much decreased melee stats. They, ha they are now shielded anymore. The melee defense is now 14, the melee attack 16. It's complete garbage, everything now. Um, the amount of AP damage is 2, also decreased. So, um, as I said, you don't really, you don't need the uh, good mini stats or decent mini stats on this kind of units. So this can, can forget this completely. A bit a problem is, in my opinion, the small missile range of 70. Um, also, the missile damage is now 15. It's not so much a difference to the normal skin cohorts. It was 18 there. But, um, the positive points are, of course, fire whilst moving and Vanguard deployment. The price is the same. So I would still say if you have at least some APM or are able to, to, to control kite units in the best way possible, of course you will pick the skink skirmishers because they are able to fire whilst moving. They are able to get deployed in a vanguard position and um, this is of course very very important. Uh, you can hide them in forest, they are not hidden or something like that, so you have to hide them in a vanguard deployment and then you can do some sneak attacks. and. But as I said, the missile range is quite short and this is a bit a problem in my opinion. But still, as I said, if you have at least some APM um, to control units like this, um, take the skin skirmishers. But be aware, you have always to, you have always, you have to move these kind of units always. Um, if they stay on at one point for a second, they will get caught very, very fast. Um, also, you don't have to forget the skin skirmishers and the skin cohort are on foot. So the speed is on the skinks cohorts 46 and on the skirmishers 48 so they are really slow in fact so it's very easy to get them but as i said probably are the skinks skirmishers always preferable because they are able to fire whilst moving and they are able to get deployed in the vanguard position but let's come to the most uh, decent pick on the missile infantry roster we can say that all missile infantry units here are more kite units. They are not as normal missile infantry units like from the High Elf Archers. They will not go with your main army core. They will probably stay or they will probably do some harass damage. This is the purpose on all three units. The Chameleon Skinks, is, the Chameleon Skinks are the best version. They have a missile damage of 23. They have a missile range of 80. They have um, so all some decent mini combat stats, even if don't have to expect here any wonders. Um, you can deploy them also in a vanguard position. They can fire whilst moving. They're causing also poison attacks. All three missile infantry units on the Lizardman roster causing poison attacks. This is always good. They have a missile resistance of 40%. This is a very huge thing. You don't have to forget a missile resistance of 40% means that it is very difficult to snipe them out. You cannot, uh, you can do some tests by your own, to s put some archers and stuff um, and let, sh let them shoot on these chameleon skins. You will see the damage will not add up. It will take a massive amount of time till these guys will die. And this is very important because these guys are also very unarmored. The amount is just 30. So they sh should get a lot of damage, but because of this missile resistance of 40%, it is nearly impossible to snipe them out with normal archers and stuff. This is quite interesting. Um, as I said, just advantages over here. The only disadvantage is that these guys have a higher price. The price is 600 credits. This is quite decent. So two groups have a price of 1,200 credits. It's not really cheap anymore, but still, this is a very, very strong kite unit and for this reason it is really worth to bring if you want to play with kite units if it if you want to play this a tactic with harass damage and stuff like that you need chameleon skins because these guys are really superior and they are, they are really worth the price over here the ap damage is free it's not they are not declared as a, a, a ap missile damage that they cause ap missile damage but free is not really bad it's okay for a unit that is not declared as a ap missile damage unit um, Besides from that, nothing more. They are aquatic. 
and um, uh, yeah they are also not so high speed so you have to move them all the time they get caught very fast from um, uh, from enemy cavalry but you don't have to forget all these units causing poison and quite interesting is that the chameleon skinks causing also poison with their melee attack so if they get caught from a unit they also cause poison in melee combat this is also a quite nice factor so for example also if they run out of ammunition um, you can send them in the front line and this poison attack will benefit your other units will also benefit from that if this this unit over here will poison the enemy units this is quite nice and um, the big advantage of all free missile infantry units over here is that all causing poison even if the speed is slow with 84 and 46 uh, with 48 and 46 um, it's still okay because of the poison because you can shoot the uh, you could shoot on your followers on your hunters their speed will reduce by 25 4 percent and then it's not so easy anymore to get for example a group of chameleon skinks but also skin skirmishers or skin cohorts so uh, this is quite nice uh, the poison ability is very very important because in fact they are really really slow units over here but anyway the chameleon skinks are superior cost efficient competitive whatever pick them if you want to play with or if you want to do some arrest damage so that's it for the missile infantry worth to be mentioned is that we have not one single unit available over here that is able to ca uh, to cause ap missile damage So let's talk about the cavalry and let's start with the cheapest worth version the feral code ones for 450 credits um, if you saw my other faction guides or my battle casts you will uh, you maybe remember yourself that i said that i'm a big fan of low tier cavalry cavalry for 400 300 or 500 credits because you have at least some mobility even if the cavalry overall is crap and melee combat and stuff like that you have at least some charge bonus a small one you have at least some mobility on the battlefield to chase out routing units kill some low tier missile infantry units and stuff like that and for all these purposes a low tier cavalry is really beautiful i really like it so i'm a big fan of cheap cavalry and here we have the feral cold ones for 450 credits this is very nice um the the best factor over here is that these guys causing a tremendous amount of damage tremendous in case uh, regarding the price so for 450 credits a weapon strength of 46 is really really good and we got also a really strong amount a really big amount of ap damage of 34 this is really really good um, the melee stats are of course for that price not the best but it's still good we have a melee attack of 25 and a melee of defense of 22 the amount of armor is really good this is not the amount is 90 so really really cool um, they're causing fear and um, we have a major disadvantage here and this is of course rampage and because this unit will take i would say in a very short period of time a lot of damage so they also will get in a very short period of time on rampage and this is a big disadvantage this is really a big big disadvantage without rampage this would be a, a beautiful unit with rampage this is uh, it's not so good but even though for 450 credits with that stats with uh, that amount of ap damage i would still say these guys are really really good uh, they are really cost efficient and i would include them uh, in in builds where i need some um, mobility at least some um, cheap cavalry and for these purposes to chase our running units and stuff these guys are really beautiful really cool and i really would say this is a competitive pick over here even if they go on rampage if they take too much damage Let's come to the next unit, the Code Run Riders. This is um, a um, also a unit that causing AP damage. Uh, the Code Run Riders are much more expensive. This is a mid-range cavalry unit for 850 credits. The stats are much increased regarding the stats of the Feral Code ones. 
we have or, or not I, I wouldn't say much um, on many points it's uh, just a bit we have increased melee attack by plus seven increased melee attack by plus five so 32 uh, melee attack and 27 melee defense the weapon strength is now 50 the amount of ap damage is 35 what is also quite nice um, besides from that we have um, much more hit points this is the most significant point so we have over 2000 hit points more so this is a lot of stuff um, that means of course that the model count is higher we have 36 model in a group this is quite significant over here um, on the feral cold ones we had we had just 24 this is uh, the difference is there of course obviously uh, the leadership is also much increased uh, leadership on the feral cold ones was just uh, 55 and we have now 75 on the cold run riders so you get something for your money uh, we have still the problem with rampage but um, in some cases the cold run riders can really pay off but i would definitely say uh, i would still for the feral cold ones the slow tier cavalry because the performance increasement is not so high in my opinion and you have still rampage um, there is an increasement there you can pick the cold run riders but in this case i would still prefer the feral cold ones because they are much cheaper um, the price is uh, nearly the double for the cold run riders and for the in this case i would prefer the feral cold ones for, for because for them for their purpose both units have nearly the same purpose they are not designed to fight large entities and stuff and, and for the and for this reason i would pick the for 450 credits the feral cold ones so let's come to the salamander hunting pack a new unit for 950 credits for a very decent price in my opinion and let me explain you why we have here a several entity monster group with 24 entities in one group it's quite nice um, the most important point or very strong point is of course the missile damage we have a very high missile damage of 105 we have 24 entities so they will shoot all the time this is quite nice over here as i said the missile damage of 105 is nice uh, the amount of ap missile damage is 25 we have a explosive base damage of 12 and an explosive ap damage of 4. in my opinion i made several tests the damage output against non-armored targets is much much better um in my opinion is the ap uh, splash damage quite low that means um, against very heavily armored targets uh, it hasn't don't has the massive effect over here even if it is does also some uh, disruption of of the enemy formation in my opinion also is the is the performance much better against infantry but in the tooltips here it's that here it's shown that they have a bonus versus large of 26 with the missile damage so if they shoot with their missiles on a large entity that will give provide a 26 uh, bonus versus large what is quite interesting because as i said i wouldn't use them against large entities in most cases i would use these guys for infantry groups i'm not sure if i um this is what i uh, my experience in the last game so uh, the performance against infantry is much better because of the explosion because of the disruption because of the damage but as i said against heavily armored targets it is not that good but uh, because of the bonus make 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 your own tests you can also uh, try to shoot on large targets large entities maybe cavalry so this may be quite nice the range is 125 it's not the best but it could be worse it's okay we have fire damage over here of course the weapon strength in melee combat is 46 what is really good the amount of ap damage is 34 what is also really good but we have mm, quite bad melee stats the melee attack is just 25 we have also here with the melee attack flaming attacks the melee defense is 22 what is really bad in fact the leadership is 55 also really bad but they are quite heavily armored or the amount of armor is good for the lizard men over here we have an amount of 90. they are also have the uh, ability primal instinct um plus 60 percent charge bonus plus eight melee attack but the possibility to go on rampage this is uh, uh, always uh, just some good points over here on the primal instincts but also with rampage as you all of you know rampage is very bad they cause fear unfortunately no terror 
um, they are aquatic uh, but in the end I would definitely say um, it's it's worth for 950 credits it's not so expensive it's not a, a a very expensive monster unit you have 24 models what is quite a lot the missile damage is quite good I would definitely say these guys are cost efficient and a competitive pick and in some builds definitely worth to bring to the battlefield especially because they are they have a good ranged ability and can go also in melee combat if they run out of ammunition and stuff like that this is really cool for 950 credits so let's come to the next unit the cold one spear riders this is much more interesting because the cold one spear riders are a cavalry unit um, that is anti-large um, we have an anti-large bonus of 14 the amount of ap damage is 34 um, we have a price of 1000 credits what is quite decent for the performance in my opinion regarding the normal cold run riders there's nearly no difference um, we have just uh, a bit a decreased melee attack by minus four and a bit decreased weapon strength for minus two but therefore we have an anti-large bonus so this is quite interesting besides besides from that nothing nothing more not much more so as i said the cold one riders are quite useless in my opinion you can pick feral cold ones if you need a cavalry unit too for purposes like chasing out routing units attacking low tech infantry uh, missile infantry and stuff like that and if you want to compete against some mid-range and maybe also against uh, already one wanted um, uh, high tier cavalry you can pick the cold one spear riders for this purpose these guys are really good and also for, get, for fighting against monsters giants was whatever and for 1000 credits these guys are really cost efficient and you don't have any nearly no disadvantage regarding the normal cold run riders so in my opinion always spend the 250 credits on the cold run spear riders take always the cold run spear riders this is the most it's a very cost efficient unit this is a very strong unit a very competitive one and if you need a very uh, some just to, for some mobility purposes take the feral cold ones for 450 credits but the cold run riders you can leave it out completely So let's come to the next unit, the River Dactyl Riders. This is a this is a flying unit. We have eight entities, eight monsters. These guys have frenzy um, that will give um, if the leadership drop under fifty percent, will provide a weapon damage buff by twelve percent, a charge bonus buff by eight percent, plus eight melee attack, and then they are immune to psychology constantly. These guys causing fear and the missile resistance uh, is 15%. Um, this is a f this, these are flying units, this is an anti infantry, uh, anti infantry monster, and we have in fact a bonus versus infantry of 10. So these guys have no missile damage, no range capabilities, nothing like that. This is for melee combat. And if we take a look on the melee stats, they are quite good, in fact. We have ne nearly no defense stats. So the defense, melee defense is 22 and the armor is 40, 45. This is complete garbage. But when it comes to attack, this is massive. We have a melee attack of 44. This is very good. And a weapon strength of 130. This is superior. The amount of AP damage is 98. So nearly 100 this is incredible high um, very good and in addition the bonus versus infantry so superior melee attack stats um, weapon strength uh, really superior stats also the charge bonus is quite nice with 52 but also we have here a quite high price the price is 1200 credits and we don't have to forget this is an anti-infantry unit so you can chase um, or you can hunt down missile infantry units and all that stuff but also with that stats you can really attack also some high tier units mid-range uh, infantry units for all, all that stuff these guys are really perfect to finish off already damaged units and all that stuff this these guys are really good the damage output is gigantic the only problem is the price a bit 1200 credits even if I th if i think this is this is okay um other problem is these guys are not anti-large so other flying units and stuff can chase can kill these guys very fast in my opinion um, when it comes to a dragon or stuff like that I think they will they will drop very fast um, but besides from that nothing more to talk about I would say this, this is okay this is a nice unit um, even if they are 
probably not perfect in every matchup just in some matchups you can bring them in addition but i really like the, the a, a flying unit that is just for melee combat and not with the range cup uh, with the missile damage that this is not here that we have just a flying group of flying units that is just designed for melee combat this is quite nice in my opinion even if i say just in some matchups really in some matchups not in all so we have a regiment of renown unit of the salamander hunting pack the umbral tide these guys, if you compare the stats to the Salamander Hunting Pack, have increased stats. The missile damage is increased by 29, what is quite a lot. They have a um, uh, higher melee defense plus 9 and a higher melee attack plus 6. Both uh, stats are now on 31. What is okay, it's still not perfect, but it's okay. The leadership is a bit increased by 10. Besides from that, we have a ability or effect, effect or effect, what do you what like to call it, perfect Vigor. These guys will never get tired, uh, they never will lose Vigors, so they're always fit and stuff, uh, this is quite nice. Well, most important point is probably that they have stalk, so they are hidden and um, in any terrain, so this is quite nice, but of course they get revealed if they shoot. So at the moment they will shoot with their missiles, they are revealed of course, so it's not a big deal over here. The price is 1,200 1, credits, so 250 credits more than the normal Zala Han Salamander hunting pack, and the difference is not really much, so I say it's not worth to pick these guys. Um, this other stats are also uh, nearly the same it's it's not 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 a big difference so i would leave out the umbral tide um the stalk ability is useless in my opinion because the missile can the, the uh, at the first shot they get revealed and for this reason i would leave it out it's too much extra charge it's not worth to bring them so this is a short example um, of the new unit, the Salamanders in general. You can see over here, I, def I am defending my left flank in, the, on, in this battle. And you can see I'm facing up against the Skaven. The Skaven, I really have a lot of units on the left flank over here. They get really overwhelming my own units. You can see one of my units is quite low on, on health and uh, nearly routing or shaking. And uh, just with the uh, help of the Salamanders in the background, I'm able to hold the line, to hold this spot over here. And this is the only reason. Without the Salamanders, you can see, or you would see that my units would already route. But with the shooting power, with the constant disrupt uh, disruption of the enemy formation, uh, my units are still able to hold the line. Um, don't expect any wonders. You can see the Salamanders shooting all, all the time. You can see um, th they're, they cause some damage, they cause some disruption in the enemy infantry ranks. But of course, it's uh, it's definitely not a huge amount of damage. But they are really able to shoot constantly, and this is exactly what I mean. They're really able to shoot constantly on the front line. You can you can see it. The the enemy formation get disrupted all the time, and this makes my own units. Uh, have, this supports my own units and make them more steady against. Um, against the overwhelming scave in this case over here you can see now um, <laughs> I have all three units left um, bit of fighting to the end and it, this is just possible because of the salamanders in the background they're constantly shooting so the salamander hunting pack is a cool new unit I wouldn't spend the extra charge on um, the umbral tide but the normal group of salamanders for 950 credits the hunting pack is is a really good unit and worth to pick in many cases so let's come to the regiment of renown version of the cold one spear riders and as i explained the cold one spear riders is a very strong um a very strong uh, is a very strong cavalry unit very efficient cavalry unit even if they are not able to compete against blood knights really they will lose a direct match but against already wanted already damaged high tier cavalry unit they are going to win or they have good chances and here we have the regiment of renowned version the pokhopak cohort we have increased stats the melee defense is increased by plus 11 what is quite a lot the melee attack by plus 6 we have a higher leadership uh, 85 overall quite nice um, the main difference is over here that we have here now a unit that is these guys will not go on rampage this is incredible good these guys are immune to psychology this is very very good 
and they are able to get deployed in a vanguard position. This is a beautiful unit. Uh, most player would wish a unit like this for a, as a normal unit to pick two. So with with that unit, you are with, with this unit over here, you are really able to compete against high tier cavalry um, because we have really beautiful stats. The rampage uh, rampage is gone. They are immune to psychology. They have a good weapon strength for forty eight. The amount of AP damage is thirty four. The bonus versus large is fourteen so this is quite nice um, besides from that nothing else a really cool unit a really strong cavalry unit unfortunately it's just a regiment of renown so get so you can get just one the extra charge is 300 credits but even though in some in many cases I would say it's it's worth to bring uh, a co uh, these po pock hopper cohort especially if you just would like to bring just one cavalry unit then I would always pick the pock hopper Hoppa cohort uh, as an anti-large cavalry and if you want to pick two maybe you pick uh, two of normal cold run spear riders it depends but it's this is really cost efficient over here and really competitive pick in my opinion so let's come to the next unit the horned ones and if we compare the cold ones to the horned ones uh, we can see we have much increased stats over here um, we have a group of 36 entities uh, it's it's the same amount like on the cold run riders but this, uh, the hit points are increased we have plus 720 the amount of armor is now really heavy we have 100 they have a bronze shield the leadership is 85 the speed is 78 they are also faster the media attack is 45 what is quite good 45 is very good the melee defense is 29 it's still not really good the weapon strength is 60 what is very high and we have a charge bonus of 43 so quite good stats over here the amount of ap damage is 41 what is really superior this is really 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 good unfortunately or yeah it depends primal instincts is here a constant ability also um they causing fear so this is a unit that is designed to fight in melee combat this is not a shock cavalry or stuff like that these guys are designed to to fight other high tier um, infantry units or mid-range infantry units, armored infantry units, especially because of their massive un uh, AP damage. So these guys send them in a group of of infantry and let them stay there. These guys have a good damage output, a high amount of AP damage. They are very, very, very heavily armored. The only the difference or the only disadvantage is the weapon strength uh, the melee defense. It's just 29. The price is 1,400 credits. This is too high in my opinion for this reason i say this is not cost efficient or it is i would say it is okay if you look on the cost efficiency but it is too much for a unit that is just designed to fight in melee combat especially because the melee defense is quite low um, for this reason they will also get some damage even if the armor, amount of armor is high so i wouldn't spend 1400 credits um, we have a small charge bonus of 43 this is for that price not really good this is a melee combat cavalry, I know, but I wouldn't spend 1,400 credits. For this price, I would leave this out. This is my personal opinion. So let's come to an, to the last unit and another regiment of renown unit, the Colossodon, Colossodon Hunters. Colossodon, Colosso, Colossodon Hunters. Give me a break. Uh, the river dactyl this is a group of river dactyl riders um, or the, the regiment of renowned version of the river dactyl riders we have increased leadership by plus 10 and increased melee attack by plus 8 we have a melee attack of 52 now this is very very high very high the melee defense is increased by plus 9 what is really good we have now 31 this is not bad um, besides from that no changes um, when it comes to the normal stats but these guys are anti-large so the normal river ductile riders are uh, are a anti-infantry unit with a real anti-infantry bonus and these guys have the same weapon strength but they have a bonus versus large in this case and the bonus is 10 so these guys are designed to fight large entities i would guess that 
uh, against other flying large monsters or stuff like that they will perform quite nice i'm not sure how is the performance against a giant or a coleg and stuff like that because the large the bonus is quite low also on the normal river ductiles we have just 10 10 is not really much but the weapon strength overall is quite high with 130 and the amount of ap damage with nearly 100 is quite high so the damage output in this case with a melee attack of 52 is really really strong but i'm not sure how is the performance against large entities the normal river ductiles against uh, infantry are really really good a strong unit or a quite decent unit in my opinion the colossodon hunters for 1500 credits are too uh, too expensive i i don't see any purpose in this price area in which they really pay off they are not cost efficient uh, the price is too high. They have a um, yeah ability called Toad Rage that will increase the amount of AP damage by 40%, the weapon damage by 40%. Unfortunately, also they go on rampage. Then they have also missile resistance of 15%. Uh, they're causing fear. They are able to get deployed in a vanguard position, and they have the frenzy ability. But as I said, I would leave out these Colossal and Rohanters completely. Because uh, as an anti-large unit for 1,500 credits, I don't see that they will pay off um, even if the stats are good or they have a small anti-large bonus. I, If I would play with river ductiles, pick the normal ones. It, this, this unit I would leave out in every case. There is no case and I would ever pick this unit over here. So let's continue with the dinos. So let's talk about the Feral Bastilodon and I'm a big fan of this monster from the first day on. The Feral Bastilodon is very very cheap. Uh, I think it, it uh, CA made him cheaper with the Queen and the Crown DLC. Uh, before the Queen and the Crown DLC the price was 750 or 850. Now the price is 650. This is very very cheap. For that performance, you don't have to forget you have for, get for six hundred fifty credits a monster with a amount of uh, armor of one hundred forty. This is massive. The melee attack is very low. This is the big disadvantage. We have trust twenty two. This is complete garbage. The melee defense is twenty eight. It's okay, also not good, but even though um, we have a good weapon strength of two hundred fifty, this is quite nice. The amount of AP damage is 160, very good, and we have a bonus versus infantry of 15, very good fact over here. This thing causing fear and terror, so also here for 650 credits, um, you have a unit that is causing terror um, to, uh, to units nearby, so a lot of terror routes will kick in. Um, in, in a frontline fight. The Feral Bastilodon is designed to fight with your um, infantry units in the frontline, surrounded by your own infantry. This is his purpose and in the, for this purpose he's really perfect. In my opinion one of the most cost efficient monster here on the complete roster or cost of, one of the most cost efficient units on the complete Lizardman, Lizardman roster for 650 credits you get a lot of stuff over here. He has a missile resistance of 15%. Unfortunately he is he can go on rampage this is the problem and the small melee attack but besides from that you have a really steady really cool monster the leadership is not really high but it doesn't really matter as i said surrounded from your own infantry the performance is superior i love this unit over here i had i played with many builds in the past in which i played with two feral bastilodon because they really pay off their massive monsters and your opponent has to do something about that and for 650 credits nothing more to talk about this is superior they causing deep cuts in the enemy infantry ranks and are a steady as a rock you can say i really love this kind of unit and what i really love in general is the dinosaur charge so i always imagine if how i would feel if a monster or a beast with uh, with that weight or that size it is charging towards me i mean give me a complete break of bastilodon or a stagodon with 10 5 or 10 tons in weight and that that size charging towards you this is incredible <laughs> i really love that so let's come to the bastilodon with the rarification crystal um, we have a bit increased leadership a bit increased hit points but nothing special over here um, the rarification crystal version is uh, yeah, this thing can heal 
um, seven times this is quite nice so seven times real over a complete game this you, you're probably not running out of, of healing over here the verification crystal seven times is quite decent the cooldown is 60 seconds this is a bit high in my opinion but even though you have a healing machine this is a healing machine and uh, for the other task he's still a um a a, a bastillodon you can say other point is that th this thing has some skinks on the back and uh, the these guys causing some missile damage the missile damage is 49 um, the amount of ap damage is eight of course they are just two or three entities it's not really important not really a big thing but the missile damage is causing poison and this is quite nice so all the units around you are poisoned then and this is of course always quite nice besides from that nothing more to talk about the price is 1000 so 450 more than the normal bastillodon but i would definitely say it's still quite decent um it's oh it's okay it's definitely not bad and in many cases we have to be brought to the battlefield because of the healing capability so let's come to the next monsters a uh, several entity monster group the croxigors and i really love the croxigors um, um croxigors are i really love this kind of unit like the trolls or the animated hawks or the red ogres these several entity monsters which are designed to fight in your uh, in your front line with surrounded by your own infantry are really really strong if you compare the croxigos for example to the um the, the chaos trolls with armor we can see let's do this for a second we can see both have the same price the croxigos have a price of 1000 credits and the chaos trolls armored also the um, chaos trolls are still better we have increased weapon strength uh, melee attacks def melee defense a bit decreased leadership and hit points so the hit the leadership of chaos trolls or trolls in general is very very bad this is the only problem but besides from that uh, uh, trolls are better than croxigors the ap damage on trolls is 70 and on the croxigors also 70 but we have on the side of the croxigors a bonus versus infantry and this is what we not have on the chaos troll side and this is of course quite nice this is uh, this unit is designed as i explained to fight surrounded by your own infantry in the front line against other infantry units armored infantry units uh, elite infantry units and all that stuff for this purpose the croxigors are really perfect we have good stats unfortunately there or mm, it depends also here they have primal instinct they're causing fear unfortunately no terror but even though it's okay the missile resistance is 15 percent and besides from that nothing more to talk about you get 12 models in one group i really love these kind of units i really love proxy wars i still think these guys uh, or uh, what what does uh, not still think these guys are really perfect um, really good especially with the bonus versus infantry of 20 so the damage output with that bonus is massive against infantry units and um, if you use these guys correct they can do a, a great amount of damage and can cause a lot of trouble to your opponent So let's come to the Bastilladon with the Ark of Sotek. Um, it has the same stats like the Bastilladon with the Rarification Crystal. So there is no difference except for one. The Ark of Sotek is an ability that causing minor damage. Um, it does not affect your own troops, however, and the effect area is quite large. So um, also this damage causing poison. So it works like this: you go, you go in melee combat, you go on the front line. This is a quite nice fact. This is not. Um, from from far away so you use it directly in combat so use this bastilodon like the other bastilodons put them in the front line surrounded by your own infantry and let them fight in enemy and in, enemy infantry uh, enemy infantry ranks in the front line and then you can activate this arc of Zotek with a cooldown of 60 seconds you can activate this uh, all the time there is no gap the duration uh, will last 28 seconds and this vortex spell 
will cast uh, will if you activate this will cause a good amount of damage in a small area or yeah, no, not small it's quite okay and your own troops are not affected by this uh, ability and it co is causing poison so this is quite nice this thing can fight like a normal Bastilladon and you every 60, 60 seconds you can activate this arc of Zotek and it will cause a good amount of damage to enemy troops this is a quite nice factor but besides from that not much more to talk about in my opinion the price is 1100 credits so 100 more than the normal Bastilladon with the rarification crystal um he is also he has also some skins on his back that causing also the missile damage of 49 and causing poison with their missile damage but besides from that nothing more to talk about i really love the pastelladon with Argosotic. i would not say bring it in every build but if you bring a pastelladon maybe you can uh, rarification crystal if you want to heal stuff and if you want to get additional um, damage output over here pay, pick the arc of Zyrtec for 100, 100 credits more I think this is quite decent and quite okay and in some builds why not um, it's a cool unit I really like this So let's come to the next unit, the Feral Stegadon. In my opinion, also a very, very cost-efficient unit for 1,200 credits, and let me explain you why. For 1,200 credits, you get, if you compare the stats to the normal Feral Stega, Feral Bastilladon, for example, we get a lot more. We have now a, a weapon strength of 420, what is quite a lot, quite a lot of stuff. The amount of AP damage is 300, what is massive and the bonus versus infantry is 18 so also this monster over here is designed to fight in enemy um uh, enemy infantry ranks it's the best purpose this this thing over here has a massive charge bonus the charge bonus is nearly 80 this is incredible high so don't let them stay just in melee combat pull send him out and send him in another group use the charge bonus the charge bonus is really really massive we have a melee attack of 30 and a melee defense of 32 this is okay not really the best but if we uh, as i already said the weapon strength is massive therefore the amount of armor is 120 it's still good on the feral basilodon it's 140 here's 120 it's still very good and we have an increased amount of hit points plus 1000 this is quite a lot of stuff so not much more to talk about this is a war machine a living war machine and with superior stats all over the place and for 1200 credits really really cost efficient and as i said my tip is use the charge bonus the charge bonus of the staggerdon is massive i really love this unit i count it as cost efficient as competitive for 1200 credits nothing more to talk about really superior against the enemy infantry ranks So let's come to the Asian Salamander. This is a, a single entity unit, a single entity monster. We have a massive missile damage of 426. This is uh, quite a lot of stuff. We have a amount of AP missile damage of 262. This is quite a lot. So also it will crack some armor. So this is this is massive over here. The explosive base damage is 90 and the explosive AP damage is 36. This is also good, not bad. Um, the, he has an ability called flammable for 20 seconds. If he shoot on something, the weakness uh, that will the target will get a weakness to fire damage by 22 percent, and the and the speed will decrease by minus 36 percent this is quite nice so really good stats over here when it comes to the missile damage so the also the range the missile range is 184 this is good this is not good as an artillery unit but for a for a living being this is incredible good 185 is massive is quite nice this is has a missile range like archers and stuff this is really really cool like the good archers from the high elves and and stuff like that the archers with the high missile range so uh, for uh, this is this is very very nice here. 
Um, besides from that, let's take a short look on the uh, on the melee stats. The weapon strength is 365. This is also very, very good. The amount of AP damage is 250, also really good. We have a melee attack of 34. Uh, this thing causing flaming attacks with its melee attacks also, of course. Um, also with his uh, missile damage, of course, um, the melee defense is 32. So the melee stats are okay. Um, the weapon strength is superior. Um, we have a leadership of 60, amount of armor of 95, everything is good. Um, we have a high, quite high speed. This, this thing can run very fast, so we have 75 over here. This is very, this is quite nice, you can say. Um, really, really fast. Uh, this thing has a missile resistance of 15%, can cause fear and terror. And uh, yeah, besides from that, not, not much more to talk about. Uh, for 1250 credits i would count it as cost efficient i would count it as good i would count it as competitive and you have a good a missile damage output you have a good missile range and if this thing runs out of ammunition or whatever you can send it immediately combat and there is also good on um, definitely not bad definitely good and for that reason this is a very good unit and i really love to play with it So let's come to the Feral Carnosaur, and the Feral Carnosaur is a mighty monster, so if we compare the stats to the Feral Staggerdon, for example, we have a decreased amount of hit points, minus 1122, a decreased amount of armor, the Feral Carnosaur has just the amount of 95, just, this is still quite good. Um, the speed is very, he's very high speed like the Salamander, he's, uh, he has a speed of 75, he's really really fast. The melee attack is 41, overall it's it's increased and the melee defense is 40. Um, the weapon strength is much increased, so we have a plus 45 to, uh, regarding the normal Feral Staggerdon, 465 overall, this is massive. We have a weapon strength of nearly 500, I mean give me a break, this is incredible. The amount of AP damage is 350 and this thing has a bonus versus large. So this is an anti-large monster and this thing is designed to hunt down uh, his prey and his prey are Colex, his prayer, large entities, giants, whatever single I would count, uh, the best use is to hunt down single monster, single um, large entities like enemy heroes and or enemy lords and monsters and stuff like that. But of of course you can also send it in a group of several entity monsters or large entities like trolls or stuff like that. This thing causing uh, is horrific for enemy monsters and enemy large entities the damage output is gigantic he's designed to fight in melee combat the melee stands are superior so this is a this is a a, a predator uh, really perfect he has a friend he has this frenzy ability unfortunately he goes on rampage that is bad he is causing terror and fear and has a missile resistance of 15 percent for 1600 credits this is in my opinion efficient this thing is very fast this thing is a predator this thing is um anti-large monster and causing a massive trouble to enemy large entities and for this reason i would definitely say it's worth every, it's worth every penny 1600 credits is a cost is cost efficient this is good this thing is competitive and not much more to talk about of course you can pick Krogar on his uh, grimlock or also the Soros all brought on our carnosaur but if you want a separate one or a single one or additional one you can pick for 1600 credits the feral carnosaur this is a decent pick over here definitely Worth to be mentioned in addition is that the Carnosaur is also a very dangerous monster for enemy infantry groups. You can see this in the example over here in the background um, with his very unique fighting animations. He's very difficult to catch, ca causing a tremendous amount of trouble in enemy infantry ranks also. So if you are not sending him into anti-large, elite anti-large uh, infantry, you can also send him in infantry ranks. Um, the damage output and the trouble is tremendous as I said he disrupt enemy formations and um, This is very massive and very strong So let's come to the next unit the Asian stagger on with the engine of the gods and For 2050 credits you get a ability over here that is named burning alignment and this thing is a wind spell and this thing is a devastating wind spell. It is a it, it is it will last 12 seconds, what is quite long. It's not like death, wind of death or stuff like that, what is gone very fast. 
it is it causing for a it is very slow and causing a tremendous amount of damage for a very long period of time and um, this is massive it causing magical and fire damage and this is of course very th very very a very strong thing over here you can activate this two times um, the cooldown is 120 size sec 120 seconds but uh, it is really a, a massive thing over here you can say um, it has a ability called portent of warding that will provide a plus that will provide plus five percent damage resistance constantly also quite nice he it has Akan configuration that is another ability constant improve the power recharge rate also quite nice um, it can fire whilst moving so this thing is a staggerdon um, if we compare it to the normal asian staggerdon the stats are nearly the same um, we have a much decreased missile damage this is the only point um, so the missile damage is here just 49 the missile damage on the normal staggerdon is much higher we have just 49 over here and some poison attacks with the missile damage the ap missile damage is eight so it's not significant like on the normal staggerdon but besides from that we have our asian staggerdon when it comes to melee combat the melee attack is 26 what is bad in fact this is not really good but we have a massive weapon strength of 480 this is massive this is um this is more than on, on the feral st uh, feral carnosaur so we have nearly 500 now this is incredible high the amount of ap damage is 340 i mean give me a complete break and it has a bonus versus infantry of 18 so this is a war machine in enemy infantry ranks the damage output is gigantic um even against a high tier anti-large uh, infantry units like the phoenix guard and stuff like that they have still problems to handle it against the asian stegaton because as i said this thing is massive and the damage output is massive uh, i would still not send them in in uh, in elite anti-large uh, infantry units uh, but uh, just for example they still still struggle but against spearmen and stuff, you can send it. You have no chance against this thing over here. So you can forget mid-range or low-tier anti-large infantry units will not cause any massive trouble to this thing over here. Asian Stegalon is really, really strong. Um, besides from that, he has a massive charge bonus of 70. So also here, pull him out, send him in another group, use the charge bonus of 70. He's massively armored. We have a mod of 140. I mean, give me a break. The melee defense is 32. This is quite okay not perfect but uh, it's okay as i said the only different only mistake only bad thing is the melee attack of 26 um so if you have a unit with a high amount of melee defense and stuff like that they can protect themselves a bit so not so much weapon strength will go through or will damage this unit um, and this is of course a disadvantage but uh, besides from that, the price is quite high with 2050 credits, but you get a lot of stuff. You get a massive monster. If you pick an Asian Staggerdon and you want to do some additional damage with burning alignment, pick the engine of the gods. I think this is quite a high priced. I still would say it's okay. It's definitely not perfectly cost efficient, but it's still okay. And in some rare cases or some cases it's worth to bring to the battlefield but as i said it's it's really dangerous it's really a huge amount of money which you spend on just one unit this is a problem it's a big target enemy artillery and stuff can snipe out this thing very fast and this is of course the problem like always so let's come to some flyers the pterodon riders i was never a big fan of the pterodon riders this is my personal opinion my personal type of gameplay for 600 credits you get eight entities over here these guys can fire whilst moving the missile damage is 75 they causing poison attacks on paper this is quite nice even the amount of ap damage is 13 also okay the missile range is quite short with 90 um, the melee stats are in emergency case okay we have an attack of 26 and a defense of 22 the weapon strength is 65 it's not the best but it's okay in emergency case to attack if you run out of ammunition for example the amount of ammo is 15 is complete garbage they have the bomb ability drop rocks so fly over your target to you activate this ability it's just act you can activate this just one time this is the problem but then there is some airstrike and some bombs flying around and yeah it's quite nice um as i already said they can fire whilst moving are able to get deployed in the vanguard position causing fear and have a missile resistance of 15 percent the problem is you have in my opinion 
I'm not a fan of these kind of units, Hawk Riders, all that stuff. You have a very s small amount of, of, of units, eight units, even if the missile and the main purpose is their missile damage. And even if on paper the missile damage is quite nice, it's not so effective because you have just eight models. And uh, in many matches you don't have the time to use this drop rocks ability all the time. I mean, you can also just activate this one time. This is, of course, uh, still garbage or still not really good. So I'm not a fan of that. I don't think this is effective. And for seven, 600 credits, I would count it as not cost efficient, not competitive. I don't play with Terranon Riders, but it's maybe just my type of gameplay. I don't love to play with this kind of units. So there is a regiment of renown unit, the Pahox Sentinels. Um, we have increased the amount of missile damage, increased the amount of melee attack, melee defense. The, melee at the attack is now 32, the defense 31. The leadership is a bit increased. It was very bad also on the Terran and Riders 55. Now we have 65. Um, besides from that, we have a physical resistance of 20%, what is quite nice. So these guys are now able to fight in melee combat for it now they can say the fight in melee combat they can stay for a sh longer period of time in melee combat but they're still not designed really to fight there even if the stats are now not bad so this is okay against some low tier units and for, for some kind of stuff they're really able to compete against them um, their stats are quite nice on melee combat but they are not experts there Besides from that, the amount of AP damage is 13, there's um, um, nothing changed. For 750 credits, the extra charge is 150 more, but also here, I would leave out these guys, I'm not a fan of it, this is my personal opinion. This this version, the Bahok Sentinels are much better able to fight in melee combat, but uh, as I explained, I'm not a fan of that, and for melee combat, this is just the second purpose. The first purpose is still the missile damage. It's increased, but still not efficient enough, in my opinion. I would leave out this completely. So let's come to a new unit, the Terran Riders with the Fire Leech Bullas. I think this unit is new. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this unit is new. And in this uh, this case, I, r I really like this unit. I'm not saying this is perfect here, but this is a unit that's throwing some kind of bombs, causing some good amount of splash, da splash damage. We have also a group of eight entities. The missile damage is 74. Um, the amount of AP damage is just 4, but the explosive AP damage is 11 and the explosive base damage 27. So perfect for disrupting enemy formations. And I made several tests against some low armored, low tier units. Um, they can take out in the pre-combat before the get unit will reach you. Um, can kill two, maybe one, two or three, three groups if your enemy will not interrupt you. This is uh, quite interesting. So the, uh, the splash damage is quite nice. Uh, they're ca causing flaming attacks. The melee stats are mediocre, nothing special over here or bad or low for a for a unit like this. They are definitely not designed to fight the melee combat, but definitely able to finish off some stuff like the normal Terradon Riders. But the main purpose is, of course, or the main thing is this splash damage or this uh, the, this uh, they are able to fire while it's moving this is also quite nice the missile range is 80. on the pterodon riders the missile range was 90 and also on the pohawk sentinels uh, the missile range is still very low um, this is also a problem with all these pterodon riders 80 90 this is not really good but even though they are throwing some bombs some explosive base them some explosive damage with their main missile damage and for this reason this is okay they have also this drop rocks ability but besides from that nothing special i I still don't play with these guys, but I would count them as cost efficient for 750 credits or would count them as okay. It's not really cost efficient, but also not bad. You can pick it in some cases, but if you pick it, pick two groups. Two groups can really cause a devastating amount of damage to some low tier or unarmored units. 
um, they can in a very short period of time kill some groups and this this is what I really like and this is uh, the outcome is quite efficient even if for 750 credits I would pick other stuff but if you like these kind of units pick it So let's come to the Bastilladon with the solar engine. This is the yeah the, the living dinosaur, the living artillery unit, you can say, the laser dino. He has a missile damage of 400, what is very good. The amount of AP damage, AP missile damage is 108. The explosive base damage is 155 and the explosive AP damage is 66. So really good, of course, he cannot, uh, when it comes just to the to the stats uh, as an artillery unit, he cannot compete against a cannon or against a warp lightning cannon and stuff like that. But it's still good, it's still not bad, um, it's still quite decent and he has an ability called blinded for 10 seconds the enemy uh, get, when it when he gets hit by the missile or by the laser the immediate attack will reduce by minus 26 the accuracy by minus 40 percent and the melee defense by minus 27 this is quite nice the missile range is 240 especially here he cannot this shows you that he cannot compete against some high tier cannons or elite cannons from other factions that have uh, three or four hundred uh, missile range of three or four hundred this is much higher so it's the missile range is quite short and in most cases you are not able to shoot from start on you have to move first and this is of course a disadvantage in most cases lizard men always have to move because just with uh, the range capabilities you are not able to force your enemy to to move towards you so this is a tactical disadvantage of course his ammunition causing magical and flaming attacks. This is quite nice. The other stats are similar to um, normal Bastilodon stats. We have a bit of increased leadership by plus five, bit of increased uh, hit points, and nothing special. He, this thing causing fear and terror. Um, has a missile resistance of 15%. So if he runs out of ammunition, he's, it is a normal Bastilodon. In the most case, as in, I would definitely say in summary, he is not cost efficient. And he's, my opinion, just in some cases a competitive pick because you get outranged you get outpowered in the end you pay 1100 credits on a bad artillery unit um, the missile damage is good it's definitely not bad but we have a very small range and all, all um, and we have a this is a problem because he cannot compete against uh, other artillery units and if your enemy brings uh, other artillery units to the battlefield he outranges you very fast and he will kill this thing in, in within seconds so i would definitely say i would leave it out just in some rare cases you can bring it but it's not cost efficient it's too much money for a would count it as a bad artillery unit so just my opinion so let's talk about the Stagadon. He's quite high priced with 1650 credits. Um, this thing has some good ranged capabilities. Also, we have a missile damage of 371. This is quite nice. Um, we, he has some several skinks on the back and they're throwing some spears and stuff. So this is quite nice. The AP missile damage is uh, 300, what is very strong. So. It is definitely a good amount of damage. Uh, I mean, the missile damage is normally a side effect. The Stegodon is normally designed to find a melee combat. It's a massive monster. But as a side effect, the damage output is quite gigantic, I would say. The only problem is, of course, that you just have several skinks, not so much skinks, and you don't have any AP, uh, any splash damage. So this, this, this missile damage over here is without any splash damage. So it will just kill one entity or stuff. So this is the only problem over here. So it's not so efficient, but the damage output in fact is very high. The missile range is 360, what is also quite nice. So he can start to shoot from a quite uh, far distance. But the most purpose or the 
most strength is of course of course the media um milli uh, he's a melee expert he's a um a fighter in in enemy infantry ranks the bonus versus infantry is 18 the amount of ap damage 300 and the weapon strength 420 this don't have to comment that this is massive charge bonus is 70 also here charge in a group uh, of infantry pull it out charge in another group use the charge bonus the melee defense is 32 the melee attack 30 the speed is 50 so it's quite slow but doesn't matter it's okay the leadership is 65 not the highest and the amount of armor is 120 so superior stats all over the place even if i would say that um i would pay the extra charge for the asian staggerdon cost 1650 credits is still very expensive and if you spend so much money on your one unit you can also spend 300 credits more and take the asian staggerdon is my opinion but uh, it's still cost efficient it's still it's still cost efficient for that performance still very strong this is the uh, this is the most elite monster on the on the list with the feral corner so you can say and um in in some cases um definitely worth to bring be, to be brought to the battlefield as i said it's of course a big target this is the dangerous like on with all on all factions with large monsters you have to be careful if you spend so much money on your one unit um your enemy uh, can be if if your enemy is able to snipe it out very fast this is of course a problem uh, but this is the only problem over here the, the, the trouble in enemy infantry ranks is massive. So let's come to the Asian Staggerdon. The Asian Staggerdon has increased stats regarding the normal Staggerdon. We have uh, increased missile damage, so we have 700 now. This is quite a lot, but as I said, this is just a side effect. The missile range is reduced. We don't know why. Uh, we have a range of 115. Also the amount of ammunition, but doesn't really matter. The weapon strength is increased. We have plus 60, 480 overall. This is this, this are the stats of the Asian Staggerdon. Um, we have a bit increased hit points. Amount of armor is 140 superior. The leadership is 75, quite nice. And we have an amount of AP damage of 340. The bonus versus infantry is the same with 18. Um, so we have better, better melee stats. Um, this thing can fire whilst moving. This is not possible on the normal Stilgadon, but it doesn't really matter in my opinion. So if I would bring a massive monster, in, in my opinion, I would bring the Asian Stilgadon with the engine of the gods. This is would be probably, if I would choose between a Stilgadon, uh, of course the Feral Stilgadon, but if it comes to a high-end monster, I would probably take the Asian Stilgadon with the engine of the gods but uh, because the extra charge is just 100 credits so this thing over here this asian staggerdon the price is 1950 credits and for 100 more you can also pick the asian engine of the gods so this is much more decent the only thing that is reduced is the missile damage on the engine of the gods version it is very low but it's just the only case uh, uh, except for that there's a, there are, there's nothing more you have some good abilities on the engine of the gods as i already explained so this is my personal opinion but uh, the asian staggerdon for itself is you have a massive monster it's very expensive uh, as a single unit i would say mm, it's okay i would probably not count it as cost sufficient anymore because you don't have in any additional ability or stuff and this is a massive war machine of course but the price is also massive nearly 2000 credits um, if you pick the engine of the gods this is okay for example but just the asian still go down mm, i'm not 100 percent sure just in some rare cases but uh, pr probably i wouldn't count it def i wouldn't count it as cost efficient i would say it's too expensive So let's come to the last unit, the Thunderous One. This is the Asian Staggerdon version, uh, the Regiment of Renown version. We have increased melee defense by plus 12, what is massive, is now 44. The melee attack is increased by plus 6, we have now 32. And we have a higher leadership by plus 10, 85, so the leadership is now quite decent. The missile damage is also increased, we have 900 now. And in this case, we have our ability called Judgment of the Uxmak. And this will trigger when this thing is engaged in melee combat. And after a time, 
every 10 every 15 seconds there are comes comes some lightning strikes from heaven and um, the, it will kill or it will damage the units around you massive and this is quite nice so if you get engaged in combat against some several entity groups all infantry units will surround this thing over here and after every 50 seconds some lightning strike come from heaven and damage these guys disrupt the formation this is quite nice the only it's it it works only 10 times but this is a um automatic ability so you don't have to activate this this is also a quite nice factor so it is aut automatically you don't have to click on anything this the lightning strikes come for itself so quite nice this thing can fire whilst moving uh, can uh, cause terror and fear and as i said increased melee defense and attack but the most important thing over here is the lightning strike unfortunately we have now a uh, a price that is unthinkable we have 2300 credits i mean this is this is really massive this is this is uh, nearly 1000 more than a giant and stuff so this is too much in my opinion even if it is really fun to play with even if it is really strong if it is the probably the the greatest monster on the list over here um especially because of the lightning strike also and stuff like this the the the, the most the, the most expensive the strongest monster here on the list i would definitely say it's simply too much money um if in some rare cases if you are sure that a large entity against the vampire counts for example you then bring this thing but in if you want to use this lightning strike or if you like it but in other cases if you want a large monster um, a massive large monster engine of the gods is okay and uh, otherwise pick some smaller ones it is too much money it's too dangerous that it get killed very fast and it's don't have to forget it's nearly one fourth or one fifth of your complete army what you spend in one single unit and it's in my opinion too much for this reason i can count it as as uh, competitive and cost efficient unfortunately not but that is everything from the unit side um, this was a deep analysis i hope you liked it and yeah let's continue with some competitive builds Yo, welcome guys to the competitive build section and let's begin with yeah, quite a standard build I would say let's begin with my front line uh, a mix of skin cohorts and red crested skins so let me explain you for a second there is not really a disadvantage with the red crested skins uh, besides a higher price and uh, they are not shielded regarding the normal skin cohort so in many matchups, even against factions that are not so heavily armored or not so heavily bring not so heavily armored infantry to the battlefield, like the screen, green skins or 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 skaven or stuff like that, red crested skins can really pay off as a standard unit, you can say. But of course, I made a bit a little bit a mix over here to increase the amount of units in my army, and I think this is quite decent. So I have a very wide front line over here of of a lot of skins. Then I brought uh, directly behind that monsters or dinosaurs in this case. This is quite a, a lot of the tactic to bring a very cheap front line or a in, yeah with the lizard man and directly behind that some um, yeah some small dinosaurs. Let me say like this for example. Here we have a feral stegadon, so he co can cause a lot of trouble over here on the on the right flank. Then in the middle we have uh, the bastilodon with the arc of Sotek, uh, really a melee combat monster. Um, with this very good ability over here so also here he is a huge um, uh, he's uh, v very strong on this spot over here and can cause a lot of trouble don't have to forget your dinosaurs always support your frontline units if the stegodon is fighting in here or the bastilodon in here uh, it makes your own infantry much stronger and surrounded from your own infantry units the dinosaurs performing but much better and on the uh, left flank, we have uh, just a normal Ferris uh, Bastillaton. Directly behind my front line, I brought, in addition, Saurus Warriors with shields to have a bit some you know, more melee combat power to groups. Then I brought a very, very cheap Lord 
The Red Crested Skin Chief. I really love this lord. I think the price is 800 credits and stuff. So this is quite nice. In, in some matchups, I really say it's, it's worth to bring him. And I have a very cheap lord, therefore I have much more dinosaurs and I think this is okay. Then I brought Lord Croak. Lord Croak is quite expensive. Of course, you can also bring something else and spend the the rest of the money for an additional unit. Because, as I said, Lord Croak is quite expensive. But I think also he's quite strong. But I'm not sure how it's, how it's going in the meta game. Because, as I said, he's very, very expensive. Then on my backline, a Salamander Hunting Pack. Let's give it a try. I think this is quite nice. They can shoot directly on the front line constantly. Of course, uh, be aware from en enemy cavalry and stuff. I think it's quite easy to kill them with heavy cavalry or mid-range cavalry. Two groups or stuff. You have to protect them a little bit. And also can send them in melee combat, of course. Then in the front line, of course. Yeah, besides from that, nothing special. I brought, the, in addition, some harass power. Two groups of chameleon kings. Always decent, in my opinion or many matchups, let me say, say it like this. And yeah, I think I said everything, um, nothing more to talk about. Let's continue with another build. So welcome to the next build. And this is a yeah, quite an anti-large build or also against factions, some yeah, heavy stuff, factions that are able to bring heavily armored units on the battlefield. And yeah, as I said, also large entities, Tomb Kings, Chaos, stuff like that. Let me start with my front line. I brought Saurus Warriors with shields. As I explained in my faction guide, these guys have a quite good amount of AP damage for that price or for a unit that is not declared as a AP damage unit. 18 in fact, this is quite nice in combination with the Red Crested Skinks. Of course, we have not no high tier units in the front line, but we have some good AP damage, some good AP power here to crack the enemy armor. And I think uh, from the side of the um, of the infantry in the front line, this is quite decent. And directly behind my front line, I brought temple guards. In fact, I brought uh, in this case the star chamber guardians. Um, these guys provide uh, the this guardian ability, 18% physical resistance, as I explained in my faction guide. Of course, that, uh, in this case, it is very important that you place or that you play with your hero or lord very close to them to get this bonus over here. This is very important. And then here you can see I brought Crocker on, on his Carnosaur, on his legendary Carnosaur, Grimlock, I think. So this is okay, but of course you can also pick another hero, but he's a quite strong anti-large monster. He's very able to compete against Colex and stuff like that. Dragon Ogre Shaggots, ne Necrosphinx and all that stuff. So for this reason I brought Krokar on his Carnosaur. Then I brought a Skin Priest with the lo Lore of Heavens. Uh, several spells are enabled here. He's on foot, so a very cheap option. A Runner's Thunderbolt, Cause of the Midnight Wind and harmonic convergence so the three my opinion quite decent spells are enabled over here to pro to support the complete army and then um here i brought in addition two groups of cold world spear riders in fact one group of pop as this this legendary uh, or regiment of renowned version the pock hopak cohort this name incredible give me a break this is the legendary cold world spear rider unit and these guys are immune to psychology, what is quite nice. And they are not going on rampage, so I think this is, in some cases, quite decent to spend the extra charge. As I said, the front line is, is quite nice. I think, of, of course, you're probably not going to win against a very heavy infantry build from Chaos or um, High Elves and stuff like that. But you can compete at least for a while, and then you have a lot of um, yeah, anti-large power and also with Kringlock you can do cause a lot of trouble in the front line then or do some rear charges with the Cold One Spear Riders and as I said one group of Temple Guards very elite unit can support over here the, f the front line and in best case of course again in a, sp in, in a spot where a large entity is fighting these guys are anti-large but also against other normal infantry groups these guys perform very very well and uh, as I said the Star Chamber Guardians so I think this is quite nice. Um, 
disadvantage is quite it's a quite tiny build so we have not so much entities or not so much, so much units in here but besides from that i think against a heavy large build this can perform very good so let's come to the next build this is also a quite a, a round build i can i would say it's a build um, in which you are also able to bring a lot of large entities you don't have to forget even against factions that are able to handle it quite well against large entities with the lizard men you can bring a lot of them and this is much more difficult so if you have two asian stegodons and a feral bastillodon and so on it's not so easy even for factions like empire and stuff like that that are really able to handle that so they get overwhelmed from the massive monster power and yeah let's begin with this build over here as i said it's not specific against uh, one um, single type of gameplay it's all around build i would say so i brought a front line again in the mix with skin cohort and red crested skins directly behind that i brought some sauros warriors with shields then we have more heavy stuff over here with the Asian Staggeron with the en engine of the gods. The engine of the gods can really do a devastating amount of damage. Of course, it is very, very expensive. So be aware you don't want to lose this thing over here very early in the game. But if you are sure that you can bring a monster like this, this can really pay off in some cases. Then Pharaoh Bastilodon over here also to support the front line feral basilo can, can always do a lot of trouble in the front line For, as i explained in my faction guide also feral basilo is not really to cause a lot of damage but he's very steady and can disrupt and break enemy formations and is not so easy to kill and for this reason um, is always quite advantage in many 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 matchups yeah then yeah i brought lord master mundi on his staggeron with some spells a lot master mundi is really a mighty caster we have renation of cities over here we have banishment we have shield of the old ones uh, very good abilities curse of the midnight wind harmonic convergence net of Amentok, and yeah this was everything so this is a very nice combination out of uh, with spells and he sits on his uh, his legendary asian staggerdon and now we have two asian staggerdons on the battlefield and this is of course very strong then I brought a Skink Chief, this is most, the most annoying unit in the complete game probably. He can go as a drum, I would definitely say a tremendous amount of damage in a very short period of time. And it's very difficult to catch him and stuff like that. So very good to do some harass damage. And this combination over here is very, very cheap. And last but not least, more harass damage again with Chameleon Skinks. But besides from that, nothing more to talk about. Let's continue with the last build. So last but not least, uh, let's come to the yeah to the last um, competitive build, and I would call this a yeah a heavy infantry build. So I would deploy it very wide. Uh, the most player against you facing up, I, I probably expect a lot of dinosaurs, and if you come bring a lot of. Um, um, infantry units are heavy infantry build builds uh, probably many player don't expect something like this and many anti-large stuff they bring on the battlefield is probably useless so this is a, um, a quite a good thing in some cases I think I brought a front line out of um, uh, skink uh, red crested skinks and Sauros warriors with with shields. I would put these um, Sauros spears in the back line or on the flanks to protect my flanks from enemy yeah, flankings from cavalry and stuff like that. So the front line is is filled up with um, Sauros warriors. Directly behind that, I brought the only two um, yeah large entity units over here. Uh, Croxigors. Croxigors can perform very very well with with infantry together and in this case I think this is quite decent even if the enemy has some anti-large stuff. Croxigors is a multiple uh, entity monster unit and so if I think they can perform quite good over here. Of course you can also replace these guys with, a, with more infantry but I would um, I would do it so I would bro bring two Croxigors. I really love Croxigors and in a heavy infantry build i think this is quite nice or can they can perform quite nice then um let's take a look another group of source warriors as i said i would explain uh, uh, deploy uh, very wide as wide as possible 
So like this or oh, and the the Sorrow Spears with shields on the sides. And the cross goes directly behind my front line, for example, like this. Then I brought some heavy stuff, uh, Temple Guards, two normal groups of Temple Guards, so not the Regiment of Renown unit, to have at least some, yeah, some heavy AP power on the battlefield, not, as I always explain, not only against large entities, but also against um, infantry units, heavy armored infantry units. They can support the front line wherever it is necessary. So let's take a look on my Lord. I brought again the Red Crested Skin Chief and a Skin Priest with the Law of Heavens. So everything on foot, everything small, besides the Croxigors, I think most probably would probably not ex ex uh, expect something like this and in many matchups it can pay off especially because your opponent will prepare his himself for a build against massive dinosaurs or a lot of dinosaurs and in this case you can this can be an advantage to bring a build like this so i think this is quite decent but that was everything i hope you liked my builds um as i said it's quite general it's not very specific so it's not so easy to say create this build over here and you're going to win in each match of course not do your own tests replace something as i used every money very efficient and i think this can pay off over here but anyway let's do a summary now and yeah let's end this faction guide thank you So let's do a summary over here. The Lizardmen are like the Skaven, a very popular race among the players of the Total War Warhammer community. But I would definitely say more in a casual sense or regarding the storyline rather than in a competitive sense. In fact, I don't really see them as a top race. I would definitely count them in a lower third of the spectrum as a tier 3 race. In fact, I saw them for a long time on the last place after the High Elves. Sorry. It's very difficult to say how much the latest TLC, The Prophet and the Warlock, is going to improve the performance. Time will tell, but I think they are going to stay as a tier 3 race. This was in fact not always like this. After the release of Game 2 and Mortal Empires, the Lizardmen performed much better in the meta game. I might remember myself that the Tomb Kings DLC made things worse for the Lizardmen. The main problem is maybe that many other races can deal quite well with large entities like dinosaurs and other arms of service for their own are not strong enough to compete against other factions. As I said here in the beginning, the Lizardmen are a very balanced faction. Besides the massive dinosaur power, we have not really outstanding characteristics um, or, a, or strengths, but also no weaknesses. The infantry, for example, is definitely not the best, but also not the worst. Maybe this is uh, the major weakness of the Lizardmen. They have to concentrate in many cases on the dinosaurs as main factor or, or as, as a support. Without them, they struggle a lot in many cases. Anyway, the Lizardmen are a good faction to play with for beginners or advanced players even if the amount of leadership is an average not the best it's good enough to stay steady in combination with the dinosaurs so in fact the gameplay is quite steady and in many and many large entities are very reliable so that was everything Thank you for yeah, tuning in. Thank you for watching a free hour faction guide. 
this is incredible i know this always gets longer and longer a reason for this is that i meanwhile put many yeah, tactical video video snippets in my in my faction guide to see that you can see some gameplay and um, this will increase the the amount of minutes a lot um, but as i said use a fa my faction guide as a book use my in my description pick what you want like to see click on that and watch for example the infantry part or whatever i know three hours in a row is quite a lot but anyway uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Give me a sub, give me a thumb up, give me a like. Thank you and yeah, see you next time. Have a nice evening. Goodbye.